गुड मॉर्निंग मिस्टर जिना हाउ आर यू वेल आई वेलकम यू आई वेलकम यू इन दिस वर्कशॉप द जॉइंट वर्कशॉप ऑफ एन डी एम एंड ओ एस डी एम थैंक यू प्रोफेसर साहब आई थैंक यू वी विल नाउ होल्ड अ सीरीज ऑफ जॉइंट वेबिनार सम मोइल स्टार्ट लिटिल अनकन्वेंशनल सब्जेक्ट्स नाउ दिस कन्वेंशनल सब्जेक्ट लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर वर्किंग ऑन सो लेट अस स्टार्ट वेबिनार सम सम अनकन्वेंशनल सब्जेक्ट्स i i am with you totally yeah yeah because and and particularly process that this uh, now that the mitigation fund has been created now there is lot of uh, lack of understanding as well as capacity problem in utilizing this mitigation fund so that is yes. something to, and uh, two days back there, there was a lots of uh, basically um on on uh, now where i think you uh, stop so also there that is with uh, that fcc project which uh, is being conceived for three states a uh, pilot so there i have uh, given a little bit of impulse to my side because i was uh, i was having some other problems so for uh, so that is basically whenever we any any agency or any bond is available to support the government at any state let us not worry about doing the hard core things because sdmf and sdrf anyway lot of fund is now available so basically objective is any additional funding or additional support if you are getting that should be utilized to create to create capacities within various government departments to promote disaster leadership in various different sectors and help them to mention their concepts in their departments that should be now the biggest thing which which the sdms across the country all sdms a uh, very true uh, and uh, now i don't know about the litigation uh, status in orissa and other states uh whether any uh, things also moving to the court because actually it is uh, after the deaths and uh, every fire thing only insurance companies bother about because they are having this compensation to be paid but i don't know the litigation status on on the fire how much it is getting uh relief from the court or yeah yeah but no there are, there are many issues in uh, this also the gradually gradually this mitigation aspect see what happened this the simple logic why governments have so far not been very mitigation oriented <coughs> governments are always response oriented because that gives them response oriented that gives them the visibility that is the most important mm. thing because governments when it is always a political government and they will decide in what way we should ask and because response visibility so we both the agency government agencies work very seriously in response to since mitigation doesn't give that visibility so that is little weak we need to now change culture in governments mm. your voice is uh, breaking uh, it is not coming okay no problem what is the problem the uh, is it audible now sir no yeah yeah look what i was saying keep uh, this in mitigation uh, we need to change the culture of thinking about mitigation in very in governments that is that is that is the crucial thing and thankfully this uh, new guidelines which government of india is thinking we should utilize these guidelines to push thinking about mitigation in various departments that is that is the thing so the culture of uh, mitigation needs to be built into the government framework now right right 100 people 100 people 
so now it's uh, 11 o'clock uh, clock has ticked up so uh, we can think of starting with the permission of uh, executive director nida and also uh, additional chief secretary mr pradeep jena uh, thank you very much so i welcome major general manoj kumar bindal and uh, welcome you and all the uh, delegates uh, uh, who have joined uh, i see this uh, mr sachdeep mohanty dr mohanty is the director general of fire and then we have uh, uh, anup karan from the world bank uh, then we have uh, mr prabhat uh, rahande chief fire officer from mumbai then mr uh, uh, this uh, i see uh, Uh, Mr. Dastur from Gujarat, are you there, Mr. Dastur? Uh, then Mr. Sethi, uh, uh, Sukant uh, Kumar Sethi from Chief Fire Officer, uh, Urissa. Uh, then I see uh, Mr. Vijayan, and uh, also the Executive Director of uh, the OSDMA, Mr. Kamal Dochan Mishra. Uh, if we uh, now the time has already uh, ticked up 111 as per my clock and uh, we have got the permission to start so uh, dear friends uh, this is a very very important event especially when it comes to the management of fire and in the very informal discussion i was just uh, discussing with the uh, national chief secretary of uh, Orissa, uh, who is the in charge of the OSDM, is the CEO, uh, and also been there a, a long, long years in the disaster moment. I can say because he has served uh, uh, this uh, United Nations along with the government of Orissa at the various capacity uh, with the rural development, panchayati raj. So, which say that there's a very, very kind of a transacting uh, different sectoral departments. and uh, uh, so i welcome you uh, mr jena for this particular event i also welcome uh, mr major general manoj kumar bindal executive director of the national institute of disaster management uh, doc mr bindal has joined an idm almost 1 uh, and 8 one year and 8 months ago almost i'm saying uh, and uh, he has been shaping this institute uh, with his vision and his uh, dedicated uh, uh, dedication and sincerity and uh, taken at a different level and uh, various topics which uh, the collaborative partners which we are into with and uh, he himself is a very uh, decorative uh, officer as a vishesh seva medal and also worked in various disaster scenario in gujarat and in kashmir and many other places i welcome you uh, major general manoj kumar bindali for uh, executive director in idm for this particular uh, uh, very very important event uh, i also welcome uh, dr mohanty who is the director general of the fire services officer uh, fire the director general of fire services of government of urissa who is here uh, and uh, many all dignitaries i will introduce them when i will uh, invite them on the floor uh, 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 in detail uh, but important thing which i would like to flag here uh, as uh, we see that the fire has been a disaster as a kind of a exposure of risk due to this fire is 24 into 7 and all seasons all weather so uh, it's not a one disaster which is uh with might take a 100 years or 50 years or 25 years or 10 years or after one year so the periodicity if you look at that kind of a, a experience which we have uh, we are struggling with different kind of a fire and uh, with a household fire with a industrial fire uh, with a hospital fire uh, with a hotel fire or uh, for all installations whether the rural fire and all so what i am saying is this uh, uh, this kind of a uh, incidents which are happening almost we say that at 24 into 7 basis exposure of this of the fire so the idea is was ms jena uh, in the informal session which we were discussing that uh, how this fire could be taken into as a front seat of prevention 
than the, uh, the rather than keeping uh, on the same kind of a track uh, when the fire is happening and we are running around and responding to disaster because it is visible. So this is a kind of a classic uh, orientation of the governance of disaster management, whether we should be focusing on the visible uh, disasters, which are giving a kind of a lot of media cover, the kind of a challenges which we have, or the kind of a prevention and mitigation, which can save larger lives. So how this kind of a paradigmical shift, which can be brought in. Across the globe, we have been discussing with the Sendai framework. In India also, we have been talking about this paradigm shift. We brought the legislation, we brought the policy framework. Uh, every state, like OSDM itself, is the oldest uh, or, or, or disaster management authority in the country. Uh, I remember when uh, 99 cyclone took place, and uh, uh, I was part of the World Bank during that time, and I visited that uh, Orissa and we had uh, Mr. Arvind Behra at that time, he was the, uh, joined as a first uh, uh, CEO. And we discussed that what kind of an institution would be shaping uh, place in the country. And that uh, how this, uh, during the formative stage to now, how much uh, the Urissa State Disaster Authority has evolved. So similarly, many of the Gujarat State Disaster Authorities and finally got the place in the National Act and then uh, percolating down to the various states of the country. So this is very, very important to look at that what kind of innovations which we are making. So this kind of innovation is required very much in the management of fire. Two points which I would like to highlight that one is this 2500 fire in, uh, deaths are happening every year in the country. So one is the mortalities. When we talk about disaster, we always be concerned about or normally we are concerned about the mortalities. So the life should be saved. That is one biggest challenge. So here the life is 2,500 is uh, no less number every year when we are losing. So in a year, how many lives uh, in, in a uh, 10 years of time, if you talk about uh, when the enactment of the act 15 years now, how much life still we are losing every uh, year. So this is to be uh, looked into that entire governance of fire management. The second is that who are those 2,500 people? Then we find that large number of uh, women are dying in the fire and uh, uh, more than 69% of women uh, are facing this casualty and then uh, less. So this is another dimension what we look into that, what kind of a mortality which are happening. When we go further, we might find that how many children and how. And largely fire uh, uh, has been observed by all the fire experts are here. So I will not deliberate upon the fire and all, but just I'm just flagging these issues with why we are sitting today with the NIDM and also OSDMA and discussing about the fire. So what we are saying is this in terms of this, uh, how the damage uh, is assessed uh, after the fire, whether the damage is assessed by the governance or not, or whether it's a private sector or household or hospitals and all. So this is to be looked into uh, whether the, any exercise is done. And normally uh, insurance company, they do because they have to pay the compensation. So I will not go into the moral hazard and other thing and how it is the uh, uh, fire is catching and how fire is shown. But larger deaths which are happening is due to smoke. So now the smoke is a real culprit when we say that how is smoke and other things uh, draw the prevention of the uh, disaster. Like Delhi fire happened and uh, I personally visited to that place and I found that the kind of a uh, premises in which uh, the entire small factories were going on it is pathetic condition and many, that, that was just one example, but hundreds of that are there in across the country. Not to say that only it is happening in Delhi, but it's happening all over. So this is important and we are here discussed to, uh, before I welcome all the distinguished participants, I would just like to flag uh, uh, this point that we are here to uh, discuss that fire, uh, what is the fire exposure, uh, the risk exposure of fire, why we have not been able to address this issue as a prevention issue rather than focusing on response, how we can remove the, uh, the deaths or casualty or re uh, reduce the impact. The fourth is that uh, how we can think of measuring this uh, is cascading impact that one after another disaster which happens. And then also what we are talking about is this how every individual or household are phased into the prevention rather than responding to such kind of a fire situation. So uh, this is that point which we are going to discuss and uh, what are the technology today uh, available which can help us in uh, 
whether we have a same fire fighting system which we had the fire tender system or we need to graduate ourselves also uh, while even responding to disaster so today we will be focusing largely on the prevention part and risk management and then uh, later part we will be focusing on that response part that how we are responding to disaster because in the country since disaster management taken we are tired of uh, addressing these issues in terms of response response we have not been able to uh, actually shift the governance focus on this prevention and mitigation so how our the same governance which is responding very nicely to disasters how the same governance can take this as a priority so for this i would request uh, uh, major general manoj kumar bindal to give the uh, uh, introductory remarks uh, that how uh, he feels as an head of the institution and also his experience uh, in the disaster management especially in the armed forces and uh, understanding this issue uh, to be taken further uh, so i request uh, uh, major general manoj kumar bindal executive director of nidm uh, uh, for addressing the intro introductory remark and i also welcome all the distinguished delegates who have joined as a participants or panelists uh, in this particular event thank you very much and over to uh, major general manoj kumar bindal executive director of the national institute of disaster thank you uh, thank you professor Monti, uh, professor santosh can you hear me now yeah 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 so, i can hear okay uh, so thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, this particular introduction of uh, the issue as such and uh, nida is uh, very happy to collaborate with osdma on such an important issue and i need to you know, commend uh, Shri Pradeep Jaina Ji, IS Additional Chief Secretary of Government of uh, Odisha and MD of OSDMA. And also we welcome DG Fire Service uh, Odisha, Shri Satyajit Mohanty, uh, who has come to address this uh, important webinar. And all the other dignitaries who will be giving uh, uh, their insights into this thing during the course of the day. And I also welcome all the participants who have joined, uh, which is uh, right now good about 280 or so and uh, more are joining. Uh, so it will be a great learning session. It will be a great uh, dissemination session. It will be a great uh, experience uh, sharing session, and it will be a great problem solving or uh, apprehension solving session. I'm very sure of that. Because we are aware that fire poses a major threat to various occupancies in India. Almost every day, some fires are reported by media across the country. These fires not only result in the loss of many precious life and injuries to many, but also inflict heavy property damage and loss. So during the last two decades, there was a vibrant growth in the construction activities in India, as we are all aware, especially high rise buildings. And because of the pe peculiar nature, fire in the resi residential buildings in urban areas, in particular high rise buildings, has become more complex and the salvaging operations due to it have become more difficult and sometimes even result in numerous deaths and huge property losses, which I'm sure the digital services will be touching upon at a later stage. So this rapid modernization of Indian industry has made the scenario more complex and awareness towards the fire safety has not been forthcoming with this modernization and the increasing risk due to the fire. In fact, despite major fires, flagrant violations of building and fire safety norms continue. India saw at least three major fire accidents in 2019. The first in a four-story Central Delhi hotel in February, which killed 17 people. The second at the coaching center in Surat in May, which killed 22 students. We have seen graphics of how the students were falling from the uh, uh, floor and dying on their own. Uh, because of trying to escape from the fire. And the third was again in the factory in Delhi, which uh, Professor Santosh was alluding to, and he had gone there to visit that site also immediately uh, after that, which resulted in death of 43 workers. So in the second and third instances, it was found that the buildings authorized to be residential complexes were operating as commercial buildings. So when the moment commercial building, it becomes a commercial building, the load on electricity, the load on everything increases for which it was not built for. So despite these major fires in the past, flagrant violations of these norms continue and fire accidents take place with alarming clarity. It is high time safety is taken seriously and violators are brought to book. 
Past accidents show that most fire accidents take place due to three major reasons. First is the electrical short circuit and gas cylinder oblique stove bursts. The second is human negligence. And third is ill-informed habits of like beer, cigarette, not uh, having the habit of switching on or switching off uh, whenever the work is over. So they all need to be addressed together to make the buildings or any area uh, safer from the fire point of angle. Uh, we haven't yet learned our lessons from the gruesome Upahar Cinema fire, which killed 59 people and injured about 103 in the national capital in 1997. Uh, not much has been done after that. Uh, in these 14 years that we're talking about, uh, some places that are frequent victims are the temples, firecracker units in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, for example. They don't even come under the strict democratic definition of fire, urban areas, but they still have uh, fire incidents uh, which are very major in nature, uh, resulting uh, losses in crores. The National Crime Records Bureau figures uh, that has come out that talks about, uh, I'm talking about an old uh, statistics that 17,700 Indians died, out of which 48 people nearly every day due to fire accidents in 2015 alone out of which approximately 60% were women. Maharashtra and Gujarat, which are two of the most highly urbanized states, account for 30% of the country's fire accident deaths. So there appears to be a close correlation between deaths due to fire-related accidents and population density associated with urbanization. So in cities after cities, towns after towns, villages after villages, year after year, we getting killed and burnt in fire accidents. So technically speaking, these are not accidents. These are man-made disasters manufactured by a mix of, I'll say, half-baked regulations, compromised enforcement machinery, and powerful interest groups. So these are actually planning uh, made problems. These are being made due to our poor planning uh, over the years. And we are also seeing that as the new cities are being built and old ones are expanding, the necessary features that make up for these urban spaces are not being taken care for here. Like fire safety is crucial. It is pivotal that fire safety should be one of the most topmost priorities across the country, especially in population dense urban areas such as Mumbai, Delhi, Bhuvneshwar, Bangalore, Katak, and cities like that. So as cities become more and more crowded and the vertical growth is marked by buildings that continue to be in close corridor to each other, so any neglect leads to deadly calamities and it poses major challenges for the firefighters to take care of it. Uh, so the various issues which require to move fire safety in context to India are poorly enforced regulations. I'll say majority of the buildings lack NOC from the fire department. Municipal corporations and local bodies are responsible for providing fire services in many states, but due to lack of resources, they are not able to do so. 65 deficient percent deficiency is being reported in the fire stations as of uh, a recent survey carried out. According to Ministry of Home Affairs, in 144 towns with a population of over 1 lakh, there is a huge deficiency of firefighting infrastructure. So the need to build up the firefighting capabilities is a must. Lack of unified fire services in uh, most of the state, states is also uh, 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 gives rise to that there should be a unified uh, fire service provided uh, to provide all necessary guidelines and instructions in firefighting. Organization structure, modern equipment, their scaling, authorization, standardization, training on them, uh, adequate funding uh, and availability of unavailability of training institutions. Now we have uh, fire, insta fire uh, stations uh, which have training institutions, but they do not have the equipment to train on because that equipment is a live equipment, not kept separately for training. And uh, if it is kept separately for training, most of the time it is not in a working condition because of the amount of training being carried out on it. So we require that resource, resources, infrastructure facilities, public awareness is a major, major issue. The do's and don'ts, uh, conduct of regular mock exercises, evacuation drills, the training of the electricians, 
uh, who are most of the time responsible for doing patch up jobs, uh, which leads to short circuit uh, and uh, other issues. So there is a very important uh, aspect that hazard identification and risk assessment needs to be carried out uh, village by village, block by block, district by district by a uh, agency which is capable of doing so and funds to be allocated. And today we are happy that uh, Orissa government has seen it fit to conduct a webinar on fire safety for the population that itself shows the commitment of the state government to do something about it. And I'm I'm very uh, hopeful that this webinar will be followed up with some guidelines coming up, some safety checks and balances being put in place, some audit being carried out uh, in some areas, and appropriate funding and uh, uh, resource management will be follow up of this whole exercise. Otherwise, it is going to go be a waste. It will be just one another lectures being conducted as uh, part of a training program. Uh, so by 2050, we are aware that almost 70% of the population in the cities. So we must uh, concentrate on the cities. And if we concentrate on the cities, automatically the level of fire, the num number of deaths, the number of uh, property losses will reduce. Otherwise, we will be walking unprepared into a deadly inferno in future. Uh, so with this uh, opening remarks, I will uh, rest my case for the timing and I'm keen to listen to uh, all the speakers who will be coming after me because uh, they are so learned and they're experts in the field. Uh, thank you so much. Over to you, Professor Santosh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Major General uh, Bindal, uh, because uh, the kind of thing which you have mentioned in terms of is a very, very futuristic in its approach. Population density vis-a-vis -vis the kind of uh, how the fire is spreading. And uh, by uh, actually highlighting this example of Yupohar Cinema Coaching Center, the hotel and the residential complexes, and especially when we talk about this, uh, the deficient in the response itself. One that we are talking about this, uh, the governance of fire management, where uh, we are focusing on prevention and mitigation. But even if we have been responding for, la uh, for so many years to fire, Still, there is a deficiency in 65% uh, in all the fire. This is very, very revealing kind of to cope with the changing fire, urban environment. And uh, uh, you said that uh, we unified about the unified services. And these are the issues that uh, how to be flagged and uh, whether this webinar will lead to a kind of a, uh, just a generic discussion or it should lead to a kind of a uh, a, a very, very convincing document or the guidelines which we can, uh, every state can start thinking of uh, taking it uh, further. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, once again, General Bindal, for uh, being this as a very uh, nice introductory remark to us upon. And uh, uh, this is the time when we are looking, uh, uh, we should be looking into the urban governance also along with it, uh, with the fire. Uh, many of uh, states have a kind of a largely fire is controlled by the administration and many of them uh, have the state uh, department directly. So this kind of, uh, I don't know whether we should call it an ambiguity or we should call it a kind of a, a unified chain of command when we talk about an incident response system. So to that response mechanism, but the defining the system for prevention and mitigation and uh, government of india's uh, this uh, project is also going on and uh, uh, this uh, strengthening of the firefighting services in the country for and uh, leading to setting up of institution as well uh, two things which i would highlight uh, before give this uh, give his address one is this uh, we are talking about uh, the governance and in this governance, we are talking about what is the safety net given in the building bylaws. And the building bylaw, National Building Code, which talks in 2000, is talking about fire and life as safety. So this is to be seen uh, as a kind of a challenge. Also highlighted, General Bindal highlighted that poor enforcement, the poor enforcement or this uh, 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 this uh, you said that uh, population density uh, 
power composition of uh, nexus between different uh, types of people into urban governance is actually hindering us for taking action. Uh, so I would request uh, uh, Mr. Jena in this context, uh, when we are talking about uh, this uh, uh, the fire management and uh, you are uh, yourself is saying that challenge is how to make it a kind of a pre-disaster prevention uh, event rather than just on focusing on the post-disaster response. And since you are also looking after currently uh, OSDMA as a uh, leading authority for the disaster response and, and also representing the government as additional chief secretary uh, to the government of Orissa and been before at the many responsible position. You have you yourself has been seeing that how at the local level, at the district level, things are getting reinforced and what kind of a changes are required for the future and the uh, billions of dollars are being spent by the various governments along with the national government in urban or safe city uh, in the times to come. So I uh, would welcome and request you to kindly address uh, Shri Pradeep Jena, additional secretary of government of Elisa. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Santosh Kumar. Uh, uh, I must thank uh, Major General Bindal Sahib and uh, Professor Santosh Kumar to have agreed to our request to have this webinar jointly organized. Uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, Dr. Satyajit Mohanty, IPS DG Fire Service Odisha is here. In fact, both of us had uh, been together as collector and SP during the super cyclone in 1999 in Qatar. So together we have worked and uh, we know uh, uh, how, how difficult it is to work during disasters those days. And uh, that is why we uh, requested to choose this topic is that we have talked a lot in Odessa and um, in the country about cyclones and floods. And in fact, of every state has done quite a bit if not poor in mitigation, but at least in response regarding cyclone and floods. But still there are issues when it comes to fires. Though in Odessa we have a very robust fire service organization, we have about 350 fire stations and OSDMA is working with DG fire services to strengthen the institutional capacity, still we find Fire is such a disaster which, as Professor Santos Kumar has already pointed out, and uh, Major General Bindal Sahib was stuck. This is a 24 7 sort of thing, no warning will come before. And what happens? Fire, we get some information from different sources and then we respond. But how, how quickly we get the information and how quickly we respond determines our action. So I am not going to talk about uh, that. Uh, why I suggested this topic is that we in Odisha, I want to learn from other parts of the country, the national and global uh, experiences and try to strengthen the fire service organization and fire safety governance mechanism in the state. That is, that is the purpose of my uh, uh, suggestion. In fact, uh, Major General Bindal Sahaba already given the keynote address, I don't want to waste time. There are only a few issues we would like to throw. All the causes are known. We know that, yes, we have a poor regulatory and implementation framework. We have a very inadequate fire fighting system in the country. There is lack of knowledge and appreciation by building approval authorities at the city level as well as in rural areas. And then there is lack of uh, inadequate investment in planning and designing the houses, whether it is individual homes, whether it is a big housing complex, whether it is uh, industrial things. Fire safety has not been treated the way it should have been. So how do you work to improve the regulatory framework? How do we work improve the implementation framework? That is something which you need to do. And then the other aspect, when we talk of prevention and mitigation, 
In fact, we have with us uh, Mr. Bijan and uh, who, who has led a movement. And uh, the topic that has been chosen by him to speak today, why only a fire department cannot fight the fire or prevent the fire? And that talks of community involvement in fire risk reduction and even Anu, uh, my dear friend from World Bank, who was, we have worked together, he is also talking about the top, topic, uh, how do we uh, involve communities to reduce the fire risks. So, how do, how do we use this knowledge to, the, we all of us talk of DRR, how do we apply DRR to fire safety is the challenge before all of us. And I would be very happy to listen to the suggestion so that in Odisha at least we will start doing something in a state-wide scale. I don't believe in pilots any longer. We will be very happy and thankfully the mitigation fund is now available. So earlier there was not much of fund available with the disaster management authorities other than, fire, other than fighting the response systems during calamities. But now that we have it, Disaster mitigation fund and the capacity building fund available with the HDMAs have improved with 15 finance commission grants. We can utilize this to, to, to improve the regulatory framework, to bring in the community involvement in the firefighting systems and build the capacity of the respective departments to, to, to incorporate fire safety as a mandated requirement in all their works. Now we have gas grids, we have pipeline grids, we have chemical industries, we have many other things. But the states, as states, we have not yet planned as to how we address any disasters in such situations. So this said, what's up, at least to give us some ideas to start uh, preparing the state was mitigating fire as a disaster and as Professor and both have how do we reduce how do we reduce the damage and loss due to fire? These are the areas that commit success to work and this is what I look for from this uh, webinar. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mahathir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you very much, uh, because you have highlighted what uh, General Bindal has uh, mentioned in terms of uh, the preparedness of urban governance and entire governance of disaster uh, risk management. Uh, I reiterated that the, how we can, with the improved funding system, like we initially, we didn't have that much of a resources available with us, but now with the uh, uh, availability of mitigation fund, capacity development fund with the state government, how that uh, regulatory framework can be brought uh, under the change and also that execution of framework. And these two, if we are taken up into a modern uh, kind of a, a development process of urban uh, areas, especially you mentioned about the pipelines and other things, so many things are coming, which maybe the conventional firefighter might not be knowing that how to even address those issues. Uh, but uh, I don't know the new generation firefighter who are coming. Uh, are they exposed to this kind of uh, event or uh, any other explosive which happens and this will lead to further kinds of disaster? Uh, we always say that expect the unexpected and respond to disasters. So I would just uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jenna, for uh, being with us and also uh, jointly uh, uh, organizing this workshop with an IDM and uh, your keen interest in taking this uh, subject as a kind of a preventive rather than just being on the response side. But it's also very important to understand that how a response could be designed in the chain scenario so that at least in the response mode, if we prepare better, the response could be better. And when what kind of a, uh, mistakes which we are committing in the response and that probably would help in building capacity. So uh, we have uh, Mr. Dr. Mohanty, uh, the Director General of the Fire Service of the government, with us. I will just flag two issues before him before I request him to address. 
when we talk about fire response and now you are heading this institution and many of the states are also participating in this uh, the chief fire officer of maharashtra uh, 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 this uh, ahmed gujarat and uh, uh, orissa so this is important to understand when we say that international standard and the state of art like say that germany has a response time linked that any urban areas the response to the incident should be 8 to 15 minutes in japan it is 5 to 10 minutes and depending on the locations of course and uh, usa uh, is just to uh, 4 to 8 minutes in india we need to see that what kind of uh, uh, this uh, parameters which we are setting up or already set up in the urban area and in this new congestion what general bindal also highlighted this uh, congestions are everywhere the population density is increasing fire dentists are not able to move and then depending on the self sustainable system whether each building should be uh, sufficiently enough to respond to disasters uh, uh, so how you think that in india uh, seeing other uh, states and the country's uh, parameters uh, india uh, is prepared of so uh, uh, this is uh, i am requesting you to kindly address the gathering and uh, and uh, educate us uh, that how we should be taking in terms of uh, various issues you have been in the indian police service uh, uh, you are from 88 batch of indian police service with the karnataka uh, urissa kader and uh, been in different positions at the district level sp fsp ig dig so you have been seeing responding to various uh, law and order situation and also uh, fire uh, in different areas so uh, with this uh, 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 with this uh, uh, huge background of yours how you would guide the deliberations of the day i would request uh, dr mohanty to kindly uh, deliver his address uh, thank you very much. And uh, one welcome to all of you, Professor uh, Santosh Kumar, uh, my younger brother, friend, colleague, uh, Sri Pradeep Jaina, Addison Chief Secretary, uh, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, all the panelists. I am really, very really happy that, you know, uh, uh, the NIDM and uh, the OSDMA have organized such a webinar. Uh, where we can share our experiences and also learn from the experiences of other fire organizations, from experts who have been working in this field. Uh, now, having regard to the objective of, the, of this particular webinar, uh, basically mitigation we are discussing. Uh, I'll just brief outline of the Odisha Fire Service, what Mr. Jena. Uh, uh, just now told that probably uh, uh, we have more than 340 fire stations in Odisha uh, spread across the state, which makes us probably one of the most favorable fire station to population ratio in the country. Uh, then there is one more decision uh, in the last decade post super cyclone by the government of Odisha uh, to kind of build the capacity of each fire station, each of these 340 fire stations as a multi-hazard response uh, center, uh, disaster response center. So, so what happened in, for about a decade, starting from 2007-8, uh, it is continuing effort, but we got the result probably sometime in after about five, six years. So, uh, we we uh, increased the capacity, we provided them equipment, we gave them training uh, so that uh, we have a unique place in the country that in addition to the uh, convention mandate uh, that is firefighting and uh, rescue operation, we are also doing disaster response in case of both man-made as well as natural disaster. So much so that uh, we are now um, uh, extending a helping hand uh, to, to, to our neighboring states. For example, very recently we went to West Bengal um, following this Amphan. We went to Kerala in 2018 flood. Uh, we went to Andhra Pradesh 2014 Budhud. So,
So, so this is the uh, uh, capacity building uh, which has resulted in prompt disaster response in the state, as well as extending to the uh, to the neighboring states. So that is how we are. In fact, uh, since we are discussing about fire, fire mitigation, fire risk, I would like to uh, give one small example. How, uh, because you know, what I see, the Odisha fire has conducted about more than 1,000 mock drills and 740 community awareness programs in the last three years. Uh, you know, when we uh, kind of, you know, build the capacity of the community on mitigation, very difficult to quantify what is the result because we cannot have some kind of an empirical study. Because, you know, unless a situation happens, somebody responds, it is difficult to quantify, uh, empirically tell something uh, about how it has been, been effective. But I can give you one example about this mitigation, about this training. What has happened in the last about six months, COVID era, the Odisha Fire Service has been given a mandate that uh, uh, do the, we, we were auditing, fire auditing the safety, fire safety of all the COVID facilities. There are about 150 COVID facilities in this state. Uh, out of which there are about 40 odd hospitals, regular hospitals, who are supposed to have uh, these fire safety certificates. We found that not many have these fire safety certificates. But since it's a pandemic situation, emergent situation, uh, they have to run the hospitals, they have to treat the patients. What we did instead of uh, you know, enforcing, we educated them. We were doing, in fact, every fortnight, there is a fire safety drill in each of these hospitals, about 46 and about 100 odd uh, COVID care centers in the state, organized by the local fire officers. They do mock drill, they uh, teach them how to use, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, uh, fire extinguisher, uh, how to respond, how to rescue immediately, smoke, how to, you know, break the glasses, basic things they are, uh, you know, basically um, educating the staff of the hospitals. Here, why I'm giving this example, I we could see the result. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in uh, uh, last month, August, sometime around 21st or 22nd of August, in one of these hospitals in Katak, there was a fire incident. Uh, there were about 128 uh, patients and about 30 patients in the, uh, in the ICU. Uh, the fire was again from a short circuit. In the ICU, unfortunately, where these uh, uh, patients are basically on oxygen and they cannot move without any help. Uh, you know, in this particular incident, what happened before we could reach uh, the staff, uh, uh, they have been able to handle this fire by using the fire extinguisher. They have started evacuating also. Uh, by the time probably the police and the fire, they arrived. But initial those five, 10 minutes, five to six minutes, uh, the response was excellent by the staff. Then we analyzed how could they, how could they do this? You know, this was probably the effect of this uh, fire safety drill we have been doing every fortnight at each of these hospitals. So this is one example where we could see that by mere small training tips, valuable lives could be saved. And I, I give full credit to the staff, security staff, as well as the uh, health staff of that hospital, that there was no casualty. And uh, we could uh, evacuate all the patients in, uh, in about uh, one hour time. And then uh, the fire could be controlled within five, seven minutes with the extinguisher. Of course, their own system also functioning. But the response of the staff of that hospital was commendable. And one of the reasons I found that uh, three or four days before, the local fire officer had a fire drill, a mock drill in that hospital, 
which was in their mind and they responded accordingly so yes this real uh, uh, this community awareness program will go a long way in mitigating this uh, uh, this uh, fire tragedy and loss of human lives in fact we have rewritten our own vision statement of odisha fire uh, just uh, to read out we in one para we have mentioned to ensure community safety by creating basic awareness regarding fire safety life safety and disaster man management among the people and thereby mitigate the fire loss and improve effective and timely rescue and life saving activities this is one of our uh, key vision statements of odisha fire having said so sir you asked me about this response time uh, uh, yes in the uh, in the in the urban areas uh, the response time is 10 minutes as per our fire service manual 1973 it is part of the statute and in the rural areas depending on the place it is 15 to 20 minutes and we have uh, stuck to this kind of a timing in the urban areas rural areas i have not tried but i know about the urban area bhubneswar katak this is less than 10 minutes now but yes we have uh, uh, kind of uh, set up benchmark for ourselves in urban and rural areas uh, for that matter i'm very happy that uh, uh, the uh, fire officers from maharashtra gujarat uh, they are here in fact i would also like to know something about the hazmat vehicle which has been maharashtra fire mumbai fire particularly how far it is useful uh, then gujarat i see that they have also procured this uh, robotic fire tender uh, i would like to we would like to know how how useful it is uh, then uh, beyond culture mr uday vijay i just have a look in the website doing excellent job i must compliment uh, you uh, you know when there is a there is a awareness in the community naturally everything everything falls in places for example i saw that in bangalore uh, a person can you know sms to the fire service that this particular building is violating the fire safety norms and um, the fire service responds to such sms that means when the community is aware Uh, about uh, the responsibility of the builders of the of the uh, you know the uh, owners occupiers of the buildings who are supposed to have these fire safety measures and then this will multiply this will put pressure on the fire department there will be an obligation also to verify so we would like to also implement similar kind of things in the urban areas we would like to hear from you thank you very much once again in idm osdma particularly mr pradeep uh, jena uh, and uh, professor uh, santosh kumar mr uh, jindal bindal for organizing this webinar we would definitely benefit uh, from 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 the national experience thank you uh, so, uh, very much uh, dr mohanty and this was very very encouraging to know about how uh, this orissa state fire department uh, responded to various disasters uh, not only in the state but also outside these states uh, different states you are uh, taking in the time of covid which we say that difficult time for the responders and uh, upon when happened in west bengal and uh, bangladesh and during that time your force took a challenge that responded and adjusted to the system and uh, and the environment of covid 19 and uh, you could respond uh, very nicely so uh, my compliment to the to you uh, your leadership and also the government of orissa for taking this initiative and also the point which you have brought in in terms of uh, uh, the very important point to left with which you were saying that how technology is going to implement after giving this time frame that yes the rural area is uh, is uh, 15 to 20 minutes depending on the distance and location and also that urban area is 10 minutes for orissa and uh, you are adhering to that and but still uh, uh, there is a gap which you need to fill and uh, move ahead the reason which so that ensure community safety and you are talking about disaster uh, risk reduction in the time of fire and the timely response and saving lives of the people which is the vision you have i like this probably the vision should have been the all uh, all they all must be having uh, two major points about the technology 
that how hazmat model is being used hazmat van is being used in other parts of the country like uh, gujarat or maharashtra maharashtra is also is considered as one of the best fire management and urissa you have already mentioned and also robotic fire uh, model which you are mentioning again and again so thank you very much for bringing the technology part and also that community engagement in reducing the time and better preparedness and how to respond in the difficult time at covid-19 thank you very much uh, once again for being with us and sharing your views and i would request also you to be uh, kindly be with us so that we can have some question answer and guidelines while we will be shaping uh, we have uh, now uh, but we wish to uh, share something which you mentioned before i invite the panelists now we have this is the ideal time which we thought we should capitalize when more than 330 delegates have joined from all over the country Uh, in our uh, this uh, today's webinar to discuss and not to discuss but to reiterate that covid 19 as you mentioned about that uh, how you responded uh, during this time so uh, how to have a just for information to the people at the moment of india in janandolan and uh, public awareness is there we are saying uh, this in how uh, wear mask always clean your hands for 20 seconds then you always uh, do not take your hands uh, to your mouth and nose have a distance and uh, also sanitize and keep washing your hands so sanitization so what we say that uh, this is important uh, uh, lesson as a preventive uh, thing which we are talking about today so prevention from covid 19 uh, this uh, we wanted to share uh now i would like to request uh, uh, mr anup karant uh, specialist from the uh, world bank he has been engaged in various projects uh, of the world bank and long years of uh, disaster risk management i have seen him since 2001 when he was working with taru and uh, uh, dedicatedly working for risk uh, assessment uh, and uh, uh, mr anup was there in that uh whole process and now today in the world bank uh, working with various state government to the government of india so uh, uh, i would request uh, mr anup karant to share some of his views on this uh, uh, disaster risk management uh, thing mr anup can you hear me Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, Professor Santosh, for the kind introduction. Uh, uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, OSDMA uh, Pradeep Jaina sir as well as uh, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal for giving me this opportunity. And I think uh, it's a very important topic. And uh, I, I'm not a real expert on fire safety, but you know, fire has always been a focus of interest to me. and uh, having seen couple of fires happening very close where i had to do some kind of an escape you know around uh, to ensure that you know i am safe and people around me are safe i think this is a subject which is very close to uh, my work uh, most of the work that that i do on the building safety side of it um, in various institutions that i worked even in my past uh, career uh, uh, i have always made sure that you know this is an area that is touched upon when we when we look at uh, design of infrastructure so very specifically uh, uh, let me uh, also you know make a point here i think what uh, mr sachajit mohanty just mentioned i think that was very very nice to hear from him in terms of how the covid hospitals you know and these hospitals were also built with certain amount of you know uh, urgent requests you know where you need to create a new facility you need to make sure that you know things are ramped up and as he also mentioned that you know people who come there you know come with different kind of issues and i think at any point of time if there is a fire i think this is something you know which is going to be really very challenging for for any system to take over and i think the the tool that he talked about you know educating people around this i think that is one of the most important things that needs to be done as far as fire safety is concerned um so getting down to uh, my presentation and i will try to do a bit early, uh, quick on this uh, so that you know the the experts on this uh, panel you know have more time to really talk about the core issues uh, my emphasis here is on the community risk reduction as an entry point for mitigating urban fires and i, I actually chose this topic for a couple of reasons one i understand that you know we always talk in terms of you know what is the requirement and the requirement in terms of uh, the capacity uh, vis-a-vis the 
uh, which is the kind of growth that we have it's going to be next to impossible to meet those kind of you know requirements around traditional agencies to come on board and you know look at this aspect of fire safety the second thing you know we're talking about odisha and odisha has been one of the pioneer states across the country to have actually put a sort of a very robust mechanism for the community based disaster management so my presentation is basically to not the sell the sell the idea of community based disaster management but basically you know reinforce that you know community based disaster management has been quite successful and it is important to use that tool as and leverage on that kind of mechanism to really address the fire safety across the country uh what you see here on this particular uh, slide is basically uh, the city of delhi uh, when you see it from google i mean this is a settlement called govindpuri and i have been there on many occasions i mean uh, one of the occasions i have been here is to really understand on the structural safety part of it um, during the earlier uh, association with nidm when nidm used to un undertake a large number of you know training for the municipal engineers on building safety and we have walked through these lanes you know of uh, going puri and a lot of other buildings what you see in the vicinity this picture gives us you know four or five points you know one thing it definitely talks about is the varying density of clusters in an urban environment you see a lot of you know small packed you know settlements there are slightly large packed settlements and then you have high rise high rise structures so the density is something you know which also governs in terms of you know what is the kind of situation that we need to deal with it when we talk about fire safety the second point i would like to make here is that you know when we look at the large number of fires that has been happening you know over the country and across urban areas specifically there is a sort of a very intrinsic link about fire exposure fire vulnerability and the poverty and this is something you know which is closely linked and i think we have seen that you know repeatedly that urban slums go through a significant experience of you know burning down year after year and the settlements come back and again they get burnt year after year so in, what i mean to say is that you know when you when you look at this from a urban planning perspective the adopt adoption of a, a, a local level mitigation plan you know and making that as part of a comprehensive city disaster management plan becomes very necessary and in the center i think what is required is to also bring the the role of the community as a sort of a, a sort of a key focus when it comes down to the spatial analysis aspect i think um, you know 15 years ago i'm sure you know 20 years ago we did not have that kind of technology with us to do risk mapping etc but i think with the with the availability of you know special analysis platforms and you know and the kind of you know database that are generated especially with the fire departments on terms of event records i think it's very important that you know city comes up with preparing you know clusters uh, of fire risk so that we are very sure in terms of where are the high probability areas and you know how one can actually tackle it by also bringing in a lot of you know local uh capacity building aspects and also strengthening the the requirements or infrastructure which could be very local i mean it is not necessary that we need to have a sort of a big fire station coming there but if the communities are sensitized enough i think that's something where one can actually look in terms of reducing the fire risk and when i look at this map what i can typically see if we bring in the whole cbdrm you know kind of a mechanism here i mean there can be a series of demonstration communities you know that one can actually pick up you know in a in a urban area like delhi or bhuneshwar or katak or for that matter any other city in the country when where in you know the choice is to look in terms of how do we promote capacity building and also look in terms of you know the building resilience of the society as a whole let me go to the next slide so this slide i am sure most of you would know in terms of the numbers but i know interestingly i would like to see some clusters here you know the cluster that you see here um, some of the countries especially the us you know you see a you see a sort of a significant drop is with the trend in the number of fire deaths uh well in india we do see that there has been a peak uh, you know at one point of time i think during the 90s i mean the peak actually touched about 25000 and i think we are definitely seeing one more peak you know somewhere around the 2001 period 2002 period and then we are seeing a sort of a significant dip in terms of you know the number of deaths not sure in terms of the number of injuries you know how that essentially looks like but i am very sure there has been a lot of work that that has been going around especially uh, when it comes down to the the built environment uh, the structural improvements that are happening in terms of you know the use of modern materials etc but i'll i'll take a I'll take a dip into that at a later point of time but this is just to give you a sense of the overall trend there are some countries which have been doing extremely extremely well in terms of you know keeping the numbers phenomenally low we still stand as one of the key uh, you know uh, leaders in terms of you know the 
the death statistics you know when it comes down to the uh, fire uh, deaths you know reported this is for the year uh, 2018 uh, what we typically see is around uh, a large number of fires that happen and when you look at india we can see the number of fire deaths uh, was 12747 and when you look at this number when uh, over a period of you know 4 to 5 years uh, so 2014 it was 19513 then it was 17000 so we saw see a sort of a dip and i think when it comes down to 2019 i just Jay does a lot of uh, Uday Vijayan does a lot of very interesting work on uh, you know educating the community, and I am a big fan of you know what he does in Bangalore, and you know also reaching out to a large number of you know other people around you know what can be a kind of a potential learning from Bangalore to other cities, and this is just one of the quiz you know that is currently floating on his um, on his uh, Beyond Carton webpage. And it's very interesting to see the numbers of 2019, which is actually picked up from the NCRPB records, you know, it is 10,915. So we typically hope that, you know, over a period of time, you know, with awareness, with a lot of, you know, uh, movement around uh, fire safety installations happening, this number, I think we should be able to really reduce it to almost zero. I think that is a kind of, you know, tolerance that we should actually believe in, in terms of, you know, how we want to take the journey forward. This is a very interesting study, and this was this was my first introduction to fire safety. And uh, and and uh, Mr. Dastur, who is on this uh, call, I think he would recollect that I was a student way back uh, in 1997. You know, when this study was actually conducted uh, by my institution, where I studied uh, my where I did my graduation in construction technology. And this was the first time when we were introduced to fire safety as a sort of a, a course. Um, I, I'm not very sure how much of this thing is actually trickled in other institutions in terms of, you know, having it as part of the curriculum, especially for the civil engineers, the electrical engineers, or for that matter, the mechanical and the architecture curriculum. But, you know, one thing which we got exposed to was phenomenal. You know, the entire batch got exposed to understanding. And I think it was it was a sort of an effort that we did with the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation, the Ahmedabad Fire and Emergency Services Department. Um, and we, we actually went down to understand in terms of, you know, what provisions are being done with respect to the codal provisions, you know, outlined and the local building bylaws. And it was very interesting to see that 23 years ago when this survey was done, we came across four or three, few, five, four or five major findings. And this findings was presented into several forums. It was very low. The staff shortage was very much visible in the department. This came out very clear, and I understand even the recent uh, understanding um, and on, on the staffing is uh, is a bit low. I think there's still a 30% deficiency around it. More proneness, uh, sorry, the more powers are required for the fire department to really go down and seal down buildings, you know, where the non-compliances are being done. I think there is a there is a bit of an issue there where the department do not have that kind of an adequate power to really go down and seal the buildings. And there is a sort of a high level of gross violation which are being done on the bylaws. I mean, the bylaws may bring in certain specific aspects and it still continues. This was 1997. And, you know, just as a curiosity to come into this presentation, I just went to the website of the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation to just understand in terms of what is the status today. And it's very interesting to see that, you know, we still have about 309 buildings, you know, where I think the, the, the NOC is something, you know, which is still not there. So what it... What it tells very clear and loud is that, you know, there is a, there is a lot of, you know, construction activity and a lot of development happening where I think the, 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 the violation and the awareness is so low that, you know, people would continue to probably go and start residing in these locations, in those buildings where, where they may be risking their lives. And I think there is a lot that needs to be done around it. When we touched upon, you know, the deficiency part, which I think uh, in the morning, you know, we, we heard from the speakers that we have sort of a significant deficiency when it comes down to... Uh, what we have in uh, vis a vis the standing fire advisory committee norms, and we do have this kind of you know big numbers, you know, fire stations, firefighting, rescue vehicle deficiency, fire personal deficiency, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. These numbers can move in here and there depending in terms of you know how the investment happens, you know, what kind of parameters are taken for the study, etc. One thing which I would also like to bring in here is that apart from the gaps here, you know, one of the critical gaps which are also which are very important for the country to also understand and you know and fill up this is on the on the on the on the size of the 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 burn injury wards i think the burn centers do suffer a lack of you know data and also the facilities and we also seen that you know more than a million you know uh, people you know across the country would be suffering uh, burn injuries this is from a report from the ministry of health and family welfare for 27 2018 i think which basically talks about the requirement you know in terms of the you know in terms of ability and you know having dedicated burn care units and i think a lot of work needs to be done around this you know given that there are a large number of people uh, who suffer from these burn injuries coming uh, very specifically to some important things you know and i'm drawing a lot of this information here not because that i work so much exclusively as a professional fire safety but you know all the slides what you see are a lot of work which is being done around this area and i'm just drawing an 
uh, my attention to the training module which was developed by NIDM on the urban risk mitigation uh, where this has been delivered in many forums. And I think very recently after the fire tragedies that hit India last year, I think uh, even the NDMA, you know, on the info, uh, on the formation day took fire safety as sort of a very important agenda into the discussions. Things what you see in urban areas is that, you know, one is that we are fastly urbanizing as a country. The urban areas are redefining the spaces in most of the places and how we live. There is a lot of issue on the safety infrastructure for fire safety, which is not developed vis-a-vis -vis the kind of development that is happening. We all know that very well. Most in, most interestingly is that within the homes, there is a lot of change in terms of the material that is happening. And I think uh, Venkita Chalam, who basically made a presentation in the fire safety you know, discussions uh, on the on, in NDMA on the formation day, did talk about how polymeric materials are being brought into the house and which actually reduces the response time significantly if there is a fire inside the house. Lifestyle changes have increased significantly, uh, you know, the, the access to electricity, access to, you know, storage devices. I think we have more gadgets in homes, you know, that can actually get into the sockets. You know, we have smaller number of sockets in homes vis-a-vis -vis the number of gadgets that people want. And, you know, it is interesting that, you know, we just get an extension card and, you know, we put it up and these are, you know, some of the major sources for fire. Uh, the expanding of the areas into the mixed land use, I think this is something which needs to be carefully analyzed from a planning perspective. There's a lot that needs to be done. So what it sums up is that when you look at the, the Delhi Fire Services information, especially you know on the report that NIDM has published, it actually talks about electric short circuits, you know, as one of the major issues. Human carelessness, you know, and a couple of other factors, you know, which which are very very uh, important to be noted in terms of you know how do we address it. Uh, there are a large number of, you know, work and uh, large number of guidelines which have been prepared across the country. So I think from a resource perspective, in terms of what needs to be done, I think fairly good and comprehensive understanding. The codes are very robust in nature. I mean, one can always improve the code. But I think what is important is to see how, the, how, how that actually trickles down in terms of actual um, uh, implementation. I would just like to draw an attention here and not go into all the details, but this is a sort of a very interesting work which is done by NIDM and this actually captures something very interesting. It actually brings down a whole lot of analysis of all the fire, major fires that have happened in this country. It also looks at the issue of governance aspects. It looks very specifically into, you know, what kind of, you know, strategies need to be built up, etc. And one of the strategies, you know, that comes out very clear and loud, and this is something which I'm sure Vijay, uh, Uday Vijayan will be talking in detail on the how of doing it, is actually looking at the community, uh, you know, the building the community resilience and ensuring that the stakeholder participation brings the community in the forefront, creating awareness among the public, and, you know, the better level of preparedness that we need to really factor in, in terms of, you know, reducing loss of life and reducing loss of property. One of the references which I came across, which I find it extremely useful, is the NFPA 1035, which actually defines the community risk reduction as programs, actions, and services used by a community which can prevent, mitigate the loss of life, property, and resources associated with life safety, fire, and other disasters within a community. There's a very interesting paper published in 2016, the Urban Fire and Life Safety Task Force actually details it out very clearly in terms of how can the community reduction plan development process, you know, be brought into the forefront of, you know, life safety and public safety. And I, I believe that, you know, if this kind of an approach is taken by large uh, with the with the SDMAs and the fire and emergency services in the forefront and getting community involved, you know, right from the way the NOCs are being issued to educating them on various aspects of how to have a plan, you know, within each of the building blocks. I mean, it's a very interesting document that MHA had brought out, which is called the building level emergency response plans. And I think when it gets down to high risk buildings, when it gets into cluster of buildings, I think it's important to look in terms of, you know, how these kind of, you know, uh, structures can be pushed in very hard and make it as part of your larger engagement um, on the community disaster preparedness plan at the city level. Make it a part of, you know, the larger aspect of the uh, uh, city disaster management plan as well as the home preparedness plan. What it essentially says is that you do these several steps, you know, also have a feedback in terms of, you know, uh, taking back the learnings and, you know, revisit and, you know, ensure that the, the community is very much tended to understand the, the gaps. Also, good, also, also establish, you know, the required contacts and, you know, help them to develop a kind of a plan, you know, based on their, their issues. And I think this is going to be a sort of a, a very important approach uh, should should the SDMAs take it on the forefront. And I know SDMAs are working a lot on the community-based disaster preparedness plan when it comes down to managing floods, managing seismic events, managing landslides, and managing tsunami risks. But when it comes down to fire safety, I think this is an area where SDMAs can collaborate with the fire and emergency services and strengthen the whole system. There are a few things, you know, when it gets down to how to go about doing it. I mean, this can be built on several aspects. I'm going to the details of each one of them, but I think education is going to be significantly important. You know, enforcement, as I mentioned, the enforcement can be done to a great extent, but what if the community li living in that building, you know, do not respect that? I mean, staircases are blocked and we have a lot of issues how buildings after being handed over are 
misuse and i have a lot of examples around it where i have going visiting you know buildings talking to the rwa asking them in terms you know status of the firefighting equipment is installed 10 years ago 99% of the cases you see that you know none of them are functional and i have personally worked very closely with the delhi fire services to come and help and you know install some of these different systems and get the get the society you know make responsible you know for managing and maintaining those assets i mean people have a lot of resources to have you know lawns and swimming pools being maintained but i think when it comes into fire services there is a general lack of awareness in terms of you know what needs to be done around it engineering aspects i I will not get into the details. The codes are there, and there's a lot of research work being done in India, especially IIT Gandhi Nagar. You know, taking the example of the uh, the Grenfell uh, Tower, you know, which actually had a major fire in London. You know, I have seen a lot of change being done in terms of experiments. You know, bringing out some sort of very solid knowledge products on that. And interestingly, you know, cities like Gurugram and all, you know, where some of the local institutions came forward and they actually changed the facade of the building. And I think this is very important. You know, what happens in London is not necessary; it cannot happen elsewhere. I mean, it can happen anywhere. And I think. Taking the learning, looking at what IIT Gandhi Nagar has done, and looking at how uh, institutions in Gurugram, especially, went around changing the facade, I think it's fascinating to see uh, how decisions are being made. Emergency response, as I said, you know, no matter even if we fill up 80% of the deficiency staff, what we think about, I think the emergency response has to be more driven at the at the people level. I think communities has to. basically have a emergency response plan where they can you know take up decisions and you know start responding immediately when the fire actually starts you know sort of a breakout and these are urban fires i'm not talking about petrochemical fires or you know big tanker accidents i mean those are very complex but i think when it comes down to building fires a lot can be mitigated by ensuring that people stick to enforcement and also have their own plans prepared this is what example i am trying it i'm just going to go to the next slide this is just an example to talk about how community based fire know, assessment was Yes. Just checking. The last slide, sir. Last slide. Uh, on the community-based uh, fire risk assessment, which was done in Vietnam, uh, sorry, in uh, PDR, and this just to give you a sense in terms of you know how communities have come forward to prepare a, a kind of a fire risk map for the city using you know basic resources, not a high-end GIS, but this was something which was very successful. Two more slides here. This is just to give you a sense of. a fire that i was involved in where one of my office build offices was completely gutted this was in 2009 where none of the fire extinguishers actually worked nothing actually worked in that building uh, and surprisingly 2019 you can see those three images i mean it is still a work in progress um, it has taken 10 years i mean again you know a lot needs to be done this is uh, one more picture where i basically used this as a reference point using my mobile phone to basically capture information of violations send it out to the departments uh this was march 1st 2015 march 11th you can see a security guard standing there you know the door was open you know one month down the line two months down the line again we see the doors getting closed i mean i'll just stop here but what i'm basically saying is that the role of community is significantly important and we need to emphasize on that thanks a lot uh, uh professor santosh kumar i know a step <coughs> time uh, that's all from my side uh thank you thank you professor uh, brilliant how you brought experience and five e's uh, which you have mentioned about this how to make community resilient and community engagement in the entire process of uh, fire risk management uh, from stretching this entire uh, experience uh, from your student days to until now in the various squatters uh, evidences that how that every year it happened and uh, this five key points which have been uh explaining and giving uh, the brilliant work which is being done by mr udayan uh in bangalore uh that it's very interesting and uh, you referred uh, time and again uh, about uh, uh, during your presentation about gujarat initiatives and mr dastoor is here uh, so the point uh, which you are saying that how community got uh, to be engaged and how it can work and uh, in various moments and various stages uh uh with the international thing that how exactly we have been able to reduce these deaths and uh in different years of time uh so mr dastoor you are a very passionate fire worker i say that you are a passionate uh, worker fire officer or kind of a risk reduction manager you didn't go into fire service because you wanted a job you have inherited also this from your passion from one generation to another generation if i know you very well in terms of my interaction during the gujarat school time and since then you have been working uh, a day and night and taking this forward what all the three speakers have mentioned and the challenges which they have posed how as a solution uh, you have provided uh, in gujarat in taking actions 
whether it's uh, density versus uh, kind of uh, preparedness or our capacity or urban uh, disaster which is happening in the terms of fire short circuiting with general bindal also highlighted about this work which is being done by the local electrician and to larger factory and other household uh, fire uh, the fire which we are seeing how you would ad address this as a solution uh, which other states are looking forward to and all the participants are actually looking into this that gujarat uh, as a kind of a whether this can go as a model to emulate and in what way mr dastu uh, mr officer i can request him because mr dastu uh, things are not working uh, so mr dastu to now i am requesting mumbai uh, mr mr prabhat mr yeah, prabhat and mr prabhat uh, i will just say something about uh, your uh, uh, this uh, mr this uh, fire services in maharashtra every time when whenever the fire happen in the country a big fire we looked at the mumbai municipal corporation fire and i services uh, preparedness and uh, many things uh, and the modern uh, things which you have been able to say and uh, also what mr anup karant was mentioning you have heard all the speakers so i'm not going to uh, just debate on that what they have been saying that you, as a solution uh, uh, being the what you have experienced and uh, to add on what urisha has also mentioned what kind of a uh, new uh, thing which you would like to suggest as a solution uh, to at this forum uh, maharashtra uh, although we know that uh, one or two one or two times it also being in the kind of a uh, people were looking and raising their eyebrows that maharashtra government's uh, fire services is very very up to mark but at some point of time when fire took place and the fire tender itself reached very late uh, so uh, in this kind of a situation Now, when uh, any state is preparing and uh, uh, learning from your experience of Maharashtra, where density is the key, in especially in Mumbai, population density and urbanization. What are your thoughts and suggestion which you would like to say, Mr. Prabhat? I welcome you and I request you to kindly <laughs> deliver. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Santosh Kumar. Respected. एनडीए में एनआईडीएम कुमार बिंदल सर एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर एनआईडीए में देन प्रदीप जिना साहब द चीफ सेक्रेटरी एंड संजीत मोहन थी सर्विस ऑफिसर द मुंबई इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ सिटी वे यू हैव ह्यूज पॉपुलेशन यू डू हैव who is infrastructure coming up it's is a kind of a cluster which which comprises of right from the uh, right from the apartments to a high rise building to a small scale kind of a small scale uh, industry to the biggest industry like rcf and the petrochemical and definitely the mumbai does have their own challenges when actually i was working for more than a five year five and a half year uh, as a chief fire officer now i was looking after the whole uh, director as a director of fire service fire service anup already highlighted what are the problems what are kind of a, he already shared the data what kind of a status we have as far as the fire uh incidents and then uh, the casualty rates and and what kind of a response is required so actually you know we are when i became a chief for us at that time five maybe a five and five and a half years back i started with the program on announcement of emergency response wherein there are two components and that this component which has to be implemented was in a realistic way the two components were very simple one is definitely a response because that was my first priority because there are challenges with the, with and but to address these challenges you have to be realistic so mumbai that time we were that time 35 fire station for the city of mumbai and and as per our uh, 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 the requirement we require 
more than a hundred fire stations say to to have a same response as put it into uh, is like uh, in in a, like in a three minutes or two minutes, but taking into account of this congestion and all. What we implemented is a mini fire station concept because it was doable, it was short uh, way to do it. And then we introduced more than 16 mini fire station within one and a half year. So now as on today, there, is the, there, is, there are 34, 35 fire station and the 14 and uh, 14 mini fire station. So around 41 fire station, around 41 fire station are a, on, of a mediation system, which definitely have a like you know, big rail to road to go like the building permissions, then inspection. Luckily, in a Maharashtra fire, this uh, uh, Maharashtra fire service, where we have a uh, Maharashtra Life Safety and Fire Prevention Act, wherein we can do an inspection, and most of the most of the building were inspected. We have given thousands. This lot of actions were simultaneously been done. As far as Maharashtra is concerned, we do have a 200 and odd 275 fire stations. Definitely, we are not uh, like a state fire service. We do have our own limitation as a director. I am like an advisor. But now we started with the recruitment process to have whole district to be connected with the director Maharashtra fire service. And for that, what are the requirements are there? We have a VN where we already have a fund system which is coming in. We do have our PLA account where we do have a fund for for uh, uh, giving a good type of infrastructure. But in a, in a the whole process started three years back. No doubt it takes time, <laughs> whatever everybody knows. But what we did is, is like a whole, whole network system really required to be done. And for that purpose, we do have we we implemented all all uh, we are in the process of implementing two facts but infrastructure and as well as manpower and for that luckily in our own uh, directorate we do have our own training center where we have a sub officer courses and then fireman courses so it, tomorrow if the, there there is going to be a challenge we are going to implement the the whole state wise plan then how the manpower has to be. So we are kind of a prepared for that. Apart from that, when, when we speak about whole scenario, like response agency, I'll just give one example. Recently, there was a fire, in, uh, this thing, very big house collapse, which has happened near Mahad. Definitely, we always say like, you know, we have a 20 minutes response time, 25 minutes, but no doubt, Mahal fire service reach, reach at the spot in 20 minutes, but kind of a reinforcement required, kind of a, the resources required for that kind of a magnitude, which took me more than six hours. So that is a limitation, not only in Maharashtra, but it, it's every part of the, uh, uh, every part of the India. So when we talk about the response, we really require to uh, analyze and really going to uh, like very uh, really deep into what kind of a, what kind of a infrastructure and what kind of a whole development uh, uh, to implement uh, not only a response but the mitigation what kind of a resources are required so we are all working on it apart from that no doubt in fire services the communication plays very important role for when i was a chief for one of the I think uh, Mumbai Fire Brigade is one of the city where we do have a most advanced uh, command and control system, which is integrated with the disaster management control room where now I am sitting. And and because of that, any any part in Mumbai where something happens, not only a response but whole mechanism of a resource development is also uh, in a in a in a place. So technologically, if I speak about like you know communication, we do we have a uh, we have a like a command and control with the GIS GPS integration, which is at part to the developed country. Apart from that, the technology on a real ground, no doubt, robotic base nowadays a good. Role. 
and we do no robots now to fight a fire where we do have a congestion we do have a like you know uh, our our response or resource to be resources to be deployed very in with our main power man power uh, our own men are in danger that time uh, recently there were two three fires where we actually use this uh, robots so this is a future wherein like you know no doubt in india we are very cautious to use technology but because the man behind the technology really has to work so, but both of the things do on a on a fire ground the technology is working very well on a on a back backup system like a, a integrated command and control system is working seamlessly so that is a that is a that is a rather result oriented and uh, practically uh, practical solution we seek and we are, we are following for the city of mumbai okay now coming into that in a covid scenario definitely in covid mumbai fire brigade as well as i really appreciate each of the fire services across india they worked tremendously i think up uh, and i'm proud to be a, a part of the fire fraternity because the way i saw each of the firemen like where the it's a sanitization program whether recent modi saab said like you know the the the, the hospitals where the covid centers were put they don't have a they don't have a fire and uh, safety uh, recommendation in place thing was there in mumbai where we also started the drill knowing that knowing that what kind of a like you know we really had to change our role because you know the pp has to wear then 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 the whole there was one big challenge you know there was a lot of uh, calls which has happened social distancing was on a back of a mind of all firemen but uh, you know we work in a buddy system in in fire service and uh, the chaos the panic the the anxiety and still we all all my firemen has done fantastic job and and as a disaster management dmc i was taking care of like you know whole networking of hospital uh, that is through a uoc where i am sitting now the 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 response for any any of the calls which happens like you know uh, any of the uh, area and apart from that the sanitization program the scientific way to go ahead with the sanitization program that was established the sops were established apart from that i do also care i, I do have another portfolio that is security the security was one of the issue because in 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 covid centers where you have my own security guards were getting affected more than i think in mumbai fire brigade we do have a number of like you know around 7 6 to 8 uh, Uh, and and in security department also six six to eight uh, the around eight to nine um, uh, security guards they died because of the covid so that was another challenge because of that we started our own covid center that is one of the example uh, rather rather to have your own covid center so that the moral of the fireman really required to be you know on a high side because we are responding on a calls we are managing emergencies and in in the situation like covid so now it all got stabilized but at the initial stage i really appreciate all, all the efforts of the firemen and the security and, and in fact in disaster management where we i am sitting there were a lot of uh, infection happened still it was working 24/7 so these are the challenges of the modern days whether is a pandemic whether is a uh, and uh, the very is very 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 you have a like you know realistically kind of a growth um, which is happening uh, the wave our whole uh, resources required to be put into place and and place and speaking we don't have a resources but again the budgeting is the issue so, so there are there are a lot of challenges but when you put everything into a planning proper planning what really require practically require and how you go ahead when i become a chief or when i was i became a chief officer that time 
did a five years program where we planned every, everything we had a budget allotment and 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 i think that more than 70 to 80% of the success and and the main aim towards my whole planning was jotted to a one thing which is required a response so uh, i'm really sorry with the presentation there was some confusion but i think i think uh, most of the thing which are required to be highlighted taking into a whole scenario of a fire services in india uh, i think i think i i i made the point uh, again thank you very much for giving uh, thank me you. an opportunity thank you very much yes very much mr prabhat uh, this is a very that's what uh, you are a very decorated officer you have been taking lot of initiatives and president medal awarded to you for uh, uh, for your very very convincing work in modernizing and also taking the challenge and you said very important point uh, other than whatever you have said about this how you implemented and technology how you paid just not focused on preventing fire but also preventing death of the firemen who are the responders by using technology robot in our this is a very good implication or this uh, implementation plan and to said that uh, most of the time you engage yourself in planning and that's how we started with this unless and until you plan then you are not going to uh, succeed and this is a very good model for risk reduction which you have mentioned and the how you have been able to do that and the second point which i can learn from uh, this uh, presentation is the uh, the capacity when we are talking about uh, for the future to develop for the firemen is a multiple capacity are required now as you mentioned about covid 19 at the time of disaster also uh, from sanitizing to or uh, responding to disasters and everything so this is the new challenge which has emerged in the country uh, one should be preparing for the future uh, with the density and also the challenges i extend my heartfelt thanks to you mr prabhat at this point of time and i would request you to kindly be with us so that the question answer session we would take but we request mr dastu uh, if you are there uh, to just uh, move uh, uh, with the presentation mr dastu are you there good afternoon sir audible yes yes you are audible very good please go ahead uh, thank you for inviting Uh, i would like to uh, start with uh, the preparedness part what we the city uh, as we say our response time uh, in the city is around 7 to 10 minutes and only two places which are away 16 minutes which will be shortened as short as 3 minutes in a year's time as there are fire stations coming up in those areas if we talk of the rural areas forest fire very little is done to uh, address those uh, we do not have effective trans water transport system uh, port with uh, hose layers and all for a bigger distance and a bigger volume which is uh, which should be there and then fire prevention especially industries because uh, if we uh, see the statistics there are no lives lost or maybe after the fire service because what has happened has happened and uh, before the fire service reached the spot the damage is already done uh, so we are left to only saving life and property right cross properties and especially properties surrounding the scene of fire in case of factories uh, major issue what we have seen is uh, no plans for factories are approved by the fire department or nobody comes for approval of uh, plans because they have one thing Uh, shade built up and the whole factory uh, is insulated in side one shed small fire with uh, results into uh, the whole factory being gutted up uh, so 
compartmentation which is required, ventilation which is required is not there. So even if uh, compartmentation is taken care of and uh, escape routes uh, in factories where there are big fires already have, we have uh, advised them and got uh, route or an emergency es exit every 40 meters so is covered up. Have flow. Uh, this may not be possible. We have uh, gone in for monkey ladders so that people would not get trapped inside and get on out. Uh, the first thing which we, I'll talk is of ventilation. Maybe the basement or maybe a building, maybe a hotel where your exhaust system is installed is uh, or maybe if we say 10 percent efficient or 20 percent efficient not more than that against that we have come up with uh, positive pressure ventilation and uh, all buildings in Ahmedabad especially are advised on to have a positive pressure ventilation where you have fresh air or cooler air compared to the uh, place on fire being uh, continuously uh, pumped in or uh, which uh, takes care of hot gases and smoke going out from the other end. So the cooling already done, uh, even your uh, visual uh, or uh, visibility fireman takes place better and so the firefighting can be done uh, accordingly. Uh, also show some uh, positive pressure ventilators that we have made in-house and even the blowers, uh, portable blowers what we have are being installed with uh, water mist system. Even the sooty smoke would uh, go down, cooling would be done. And today Gujarat has uh, more than 200 uh, small fire tenders which have high pressure mist system. Uh, we have developed a uh, a, a fire tender which has a robo inside and the robo goes up to 500 meters it's a high pressure system and the robo is fit to do 300 liters per minute which results into about 3 lakh liters of mist per minute so 1 liter of water goes into 1000 liters of mist which is a feet per second and 50 micron water particle uh, we have combined uh, the mist system which is uh, used in uh, the state of Gujarat now and uh, the Andabad was uh, the pioneer to this introduction of the fire uh, tenders with mist system and now in the state of Gujarat we have more than 200, there's 200 for the government department and other privates also. So we have more than 200 high pressure tenders available now and uh, as uh, positive pressure ventilation is concerned if the buildings uh, are not equipped with positive pressure ventilation we have our own portable system now at least one portable uh, positive pressure ventilation for each fire station to respond and uh, each uh, vehicle even a water tender type b has a second uh, line of attack with the mist system thereby you have additional cooling the latent heat is absorbed um, the uh, hot gases and smoke don't come back to the firemen and uh, aided with the mist we have pressure ventilator going in form of uh, a portable one we are developing a smaller one um, more powerful than those available in the market and uh, and proves very cheap so uh, and the miss again an advantage uh, that we have uh, used we use less water there's no chances of electrocution to the firemen even your hydrocarbon can be extinguished very fast it is very fast reactor uh, very fast actions uh, suppressing uh, fires and all.
I'll just show you. It's a small demo. I'll be at. I am at my office, and uh, we'll be showing you that. Uh, I'll go off the picture. You can see the demo that is being done. Uh, just two or three minutes. It's a robo. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Your video uh, is not visible. It works at about about three hundred liters per minute. And the robo, and you can see the high pressure, the high velocity. Uh, you do Mr. not Dastur. even need uh, all Mr. the Dastur. robo can project water and mist at distance Mr. of Dastur, more than thirty meters. Mr. Dastur, can you put the video on? It can shoot straight. Sir. And uh, if the robo part is over, then you go for mist. Mr. Mr. Dastur. Sir, I think he cannot hear us. Portable, here you have a small portable ventilator which is about 50 kilos in weight and uh, gives about uh, 50,000 CFM low and uh, again assisted by a mist system. If you carry into the building, you can ventilate. Okay, you conclude your point uh, we, uh, because some problem in video. So kindly uh, conclude your point, what you want to say. High pressure system, uh, which is developed vehicle, which is a robo, which is a 500 meter uh, rock drill hose, and a remote control robo, which can go and pick up a hose 500 meter and do firefighting. The thermal imaging camera, so the operator at a distance of more than 300 meters can. Uh, see what the robo is looking at and what the robo is doing and even register the temperature that it is facing it has its own water shield so uh, this the robo can do it or from the robo you can pick up four hand lines and the positive pressure ventilator that you see uh, the big one is enough to ventilate a whole building uh, standing down just at the entry if you place it about three meters distance or a basement can be ventilated and the portable ventilator which is about 50 kilos in weight on wheels it can be pulled up again that also has a high pressure mist system so if you uh, uh, use that you know, you can ventilate hot air hot gases smoke and your visibility for the fireman improves and you can uh, do good firefighting and uh, save as many people as possible. Um, exceptionally useful in uh, industrial fires also, where you can go close, especially textiles. Uh, and the robo can go for the uh, hydrocarbon fires and all and do that job. That is what it's uh, developed basically in house, and then we got it. Uh, uh, so, give your final statement. So, in Asmad, we have done this, and now it is being uh, replicated uh, throughout the uh, state. The only thing I would like all buildings, maybe small, big, tall, or short uh, factories, they should have their plans approved before so that the fire department can opine upon what to provide how much to provide uh, escape routes to be designed staircase to be designed ventilation to be designed so people can uh, escape before the fire service could respond to it thank you thank you very much uh, mr dasu uh, but i'm sorry we could not see your video but the efforts you have brought in by for displaying the how the uh, robo system is working uh, very well in Ahmedabad and multiply to 200 and also planning to scale up it to all the uh, districts of the uh, state of Gujarat and uh, your focus was also on ventilation and uh, uh, smoke management and uh, this uh, planning and uh, uh, building uh, bylaws and uh, taking clearances from this let us hear uh, we have heard two states uh, especially uh, 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 this uh, one state was Maharashtra with a very, very innovative uh, thing which was brought in and uh, 
how Gujarat has been able to do and bringing technology as the Maharashtra is doing. And what Mr. Uh, Sukanta Kumar Sethi has to say, who is the Chief uh, Fire Officer of Government of Urissa, part you have heard from <laughs> Mr. Mohanty, uh, Dr. Mohanty as a Director General of Fire Services. And uh, now we would be listening to uh, uh, the Chief Fire Officer of, uh, uh, from Urissa, who has also been conferred with the President and special award for uh, his uh, very, very decorated career. So now I can request uh, Mr. Uh, Sethi uh, to uh, elaborate upon what doc, uh, Dr. Mohanty has said uh, in, uh, in the form of Shakai Gurisa has been able to say. So can I request uh, Mr. Sethi, please? Sukanta Kumar Sethi, Chief Fire Officer. Good afternoon, sir. I would request to kindly build up what uh, Dr. Mohanty has mentioned. Respected Professor Santosh Kumar ji okay. from NIDL, Major General Manoj Kumar, Executive Director of NIDL, respected Mr. Pradeep Kumar Jena, Additional Chief Secretary to Government, SRC, and Managing Director of OSDMA, respected Dr. Satyajit Mohanty, DG Fire Service, Home Guards and Civil Defense, and my colleagues, Mr. Parahangadle from uh, Mumbai Fire Service, Mr. Dostu from Ahmedabad Fire Service. Sir, due to rapid urbanization, construction of a vertical structure and rapid industrialization, the risk of fire of the cities became multiple. Due to recent fire in Anuj Mandi in New Delhi, coaching center fire in Surat, Korolabag fire, COVID hospital fire in Ahmedabad, and a hotel turned COVID care center that is Sorna at Vijayawada, fire incident and fire in auto LPG tank of a petrol pump in Bhubneswar, number of lives have been lost and huge property has also been lost in the different major fire in the country. Every year, thousand crores of property have been lost due to fire. 50, more than 56% of a death toll is due to fire. These fire accidents compel us for proper implementation of a fire safety measures in the building industries which have the fire risk for fire safety of our citizens. So fire safety is an important subject and it needs it is the, the needs of the time. Fire safety can be achieved if the building shall be constructed. Fire safety can be achieved if the building shall be constructed with proper planning and designing, adopting all codal provision of a development authority and building code. The fire can stop in the initial stage if a proper passive and active fire protection measure taken up while constructing the building or developing any infrastructure, fire loss can be reduced by constructing the building with fire resistance material. Installation of active and passive fire protection system, proper training, and extinction of a fire with the appropriate method. Okay. Sir, to achieve the fire safety, the builders or the industrialists or the occupants should strictly adhere the local building codes, other statutory norms, which includes setback, means of escape, means of access, habiting road, etc. All electrical installation must be fitted as per the electrical safety code and proper use of electrical gadgets because we know that numbers of a fire accident occurred due to electric circuit. Adopting good practices for storage of a flammable and combustible materials as per petroleum rule, gas cylinder rule 2004, Explosive Substances Act 1908 and other codal provisions. Provisions of provisions of required fire protection measure in compliance with the National Building Code 2016, adhering set of practices with a clear intention to reduce the fire loss, conducting regular training on emergency evacuation and maintenance of a firefighting installation like a hydrant, hose reel hose, detection and alarm system and pump, etc. There is a need of community awareness there is a need of a community awareness on a regular basis to inject the practices in the mind of occupier or employee how to react in case of fire and also practice the evacuation drill. 
most of the owner of the building think that expenditure incurred for the installation of a fire safety measures is a financial burden and try their best to compromise with the safety measures. As an instance, I can say in some buildings, if we ask to install the diesel pumps with the electric pumps, they have come with a request that we have connected our electric pump with the generator DG sets. So and it, it can be work in case of a, uh, any emergency and in case of a failure of any electricity. But as for the National Building Code 2016, there is a need of a pump, two electric pump and one diesel pump with a jockey pump to work during any emergency. Sometimes the builders are not willing to install diesel pumps with electric pumps, with a plea that electric pump connected with a DG set, which can work during the emergency, though it is mandatory as for the National Building Code. Sir, therefore, it is the high time to create mass awareness to change the mind of the citizens to adopt proper fire protection measure to achieve fire safety to save the life and property of the public. Sir, Odisha Fire Service is a leading fire service. Odisha Fire Service is a leading fire service in the state, in the country. Odisha Fire Service Act was enacted in the year 1992 to provide fire safety in the state. Section 10 of this act empowered the state government to declare different fire risk premises. Odisha Fire Prevention and Fire Safety Rule implemented in 2017, which specified the fire risk premises. Odisha Fire Service issued fire safety recommendation to at the plan approval stage prior to the commencement of the proposed project because after enactment of fire prevention and fire safety rule 2017 we have streamlined the issue of fire safety certificate and fire safety recommendation to the builders or the industrialists those have required the fire safety certificates on call. Odisha Fire Service Prevention Rule 2017 empower the authorized officer of the state fire service to enter and inspect the fire risk premises to ascertain adequacy and the contravention of fire safety measures. And under this rule, sealing, uh, the authorized officer also empower to sealing of a fire on safe building and initiating prosecution procedure against the owner and the occupier. Besides, if required, the authorized officer can suggest the electrical and the water supply department to disconnect the water. So by this method, we can achieve the fire safety measures in our state. And we can compel the builders and industrialists to take the necessary fire protection measure for the safety of their buildings or the industries. So all, the, all these services, that is issue of a fire safety certificate and a fire safety Recommendation have been issued in online in a time bound period to give the better services to our public. We have our own website and we have requested all the citizens of the state to apply in online and without any touch point. We have issued the FSR before the project, before the starting of the project and we have given the fire safety certificate after completion of the project. Sir, <clears throat> in operational infrastructure, Odisha Fire Service, having two, uh, 340 fire station, we have 314 blocks in Odisha and almost all the blocks have been covered up with a fire station with a uh, aim to reduce the response time to attend the fire with a minimum period. Sir, we have more than 1,000 vehicle fleet and 600 pumps to uh, utilize in case of any fire. Sir, Odisha Fire Service not only confined with the firefighting, but also we have uh, all the fire service persons are trained to uh, act in the during the any emergency or during any uh, natural calamities or man-made disaster. Sir, almost all fire service personnel are trained 
to handle the power surge, power boards, and other equipment, all disaster equipments, that is uh, uh, cutting gear and lifting gear. O Odisha State Relief Commissioner as uh, SRC has provided the funds to strengthen the fire service to provide the disaster management equipment. Sir, now that is, uh, we, have, uh, we have also three training center uh, because uh, we have to uh, develop the capacity of our personnel. So we have three training academy, one at Odisha Fire Disaster Response Academy at Bhuvneswa, one at Odisha Fire Disaster Response Institute at Naraj Kotak, and one at uh, Oswali, that is a water-related training center at Ramsundi Puri. Sir, we trained our people as well as the, uh, we trained our staff, employees, as well as the uh, employees of Nagaland and uh, other states uh, on firefighting as well as on disaster management. We have developed our personnel to, uh, uh, to work during any disaster and they, have, uh, they are all trained to work with the all type of disaster management equipment. So, sir, what is your recommendation? Sir, actually, sir, uh, yeah, uh, problem is that, sir, it is difficult to inspect all the buildings by the uh, employees, though we have more than 5,600 employees, but it is a difficult task for us. So, there is, we can recommend that we should have a uh, panel uh, uh, like the, uh, uh, we should have a uh, pan, uh, uh, list of uh, we should have a panel to uh, inspect the uh, uh, third party uh, uh, third party audit system or like this to inspect the buildings and to create the awareness among the uh, among the public because uh, though uh, the, uh, there is a uh, uh, as per the fire prevention and fire safety rule 2017 though all the buildings particularly the specified buildings who is uh, risk of fire is uh, uh, required the fire safety certificate but due to lack of knowledge due to lack of awareness people are not willing to take the uh, uh, to adopt the fire safety certificate to take the fire safety certificate and adopt the fire safety measures so it requires the awareness among the public Besides, there should be a third party audit system, there should be a panel, those can be inspect the building, those can insist the public for, uh, uh, for uh, giving the, uh, for, uh, to uh, make them our, uh, to get the certificates and to make these uh, fire safety complaints of their building. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sethi, for bringing okay. this uh, on the floor. And uh, some panelists have recommended uh, that we should be having a kind of a public engagement, uh, other than what they have been doing and uh, strengthening the, uh, the entire machinery in terms of governance. Uh, we need to look at that how uh, these things would work and uh, how community can be. Uh, Anup also mentioned about six, uh, five years uh, about that and uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, engagement of community in terms of uh, uh, taking this agenda forward. We have Mr. Vijayan here, uh, uh, Bjorn Carton, and he's uh, working uh, uh, in Bangalore. So after listening to all these presentations and all have recommended uh, what you would be uh, in terms of uh, taking community engagement, whether community engagement uh, should be taken by the enforcement of law or by taking uh, making as a punishment or also incentivizing this uh, initiative taken by the community. I have to add what something. Kind of proposition? Uh, yeah, Professor please. Kumar, uh, with your permission, can I have a Achha, small okay. introduction? Uh, Dr. Mohanty, yeah, please. Please, I know. I am very keen also to uh, listen to uh, Mr. Uday Vijayan. But small uh, intervention here, what our CFO was uh, presenting uh, regarding this third party audit, fine. Uh, but I have noticed uh, another major, uh, I would say, uh, gap in the system. What is that gap? Um, many of these uh, occupiers of fire risk buildings, um, they are not aware of uh, the, the the provisions of the law, for example, national building code or other things. 
so there is a, a gap here to give some kind of a uh, expert um, i would say uh, you know opinion or maybe consultancy if i use the word uh, in, in in you know advising these people that this is a fire safety fire risk building as for the uh, respective state acts but these are the requirements as per the national building code or explosive act or uh, 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 you know chemical substance act there are so many acts and there are so many uh, uh, recommendations also and these recommendations vary also the building code is 1960 uh, 2016 it was amended last 2006 may be amended in 2020 people are not aware occupiers are not aware so there is a gap here throughout the country probably as far as consultancy is concerned so i would suggest that there should be some kind of institutional arrangement in the states about we can uh, 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 with who, with with whom they can register uh, i can give one analogy for example in the last about a decade the private security has come up uh, in a big way in all the states many states have their rules resolutions even acts and the pradesh has an act Uh, so there is a registration authority for example in odisha uh, uh, security service will register with uh, the home department but um, one noc has to be uh, got from the police or whatever uh, there is some kind of a rule so fire safety consultancy should also be institutionalized uh, state wide uh, and there should be some kind of a rule so that there is a body which is regulating it and which the body with whom they have to be registered so that their genuine uh, uh, you know team of uh, consultants and this will go a long way because people are asking us in fact i have changed the entire website uh, you know um, frequently asked question 3 or 4 pages for people to know what they are supposed to do as per the law very simple words but even then they would like to know further because fire safety recommendation i see this online in odisha there are about 45 requirements uh, he has to download he has to fill it up the authorized officer has to go people are not i am occupied i am ready to give everything i am ready to install everything but there is no consultants so that is one suggestion from my side thank, thank you, you very much uh, for giving this and bringing it and other uh, awareness lack of awareness amongst various stakeholders about different provisions of uh, uh, law and the framework and we can bring into the recommendations that how we can go ahead so uday uh, vijayan would like to highlight that one side we are talking about that people are not aware and uh, or the agencies are not aware and also that community when we are talking about engagement of community in the entire process of fire risk management as a preventive board i would like to listen your experience uh, everybody would like to listen although i am uh, my sincere apology to all the audiences because we have exceeded the time uh, because so uh, it was so interesting and so pragmatic so we uh, we could not uh, thought of uh, stopping the uh, these uh, resource persons because we hardly get time from them so mr uday vijayan i would request you to please share your uh, very important uh, experience to the entire people thank you yeah. thank you so much mr santosh kumar uh <clears throat> it's indeed a privilege to be participating here uh, in this webinar because i do not belong to your community i am not professionally qualified i happen to have come into fire safety by sheer accident and pun intended uh, some of you may remember a call a fire in bangalore in 2010 uh, where there was a carlton towers incident where we lost nine uh, nine people one of them was my son who passed away in that uh, fire accident and it is since then that i set up beyond carlton with the whole aim that we try and make sure that more people uh, get a little aware about fire safety so we've been around for 10 years and I titled my presentation as the other view because I just thought I should share a view both over the last ten years as well as a citizen's perspective. Uh, so far, we've heard people who've been in the industry, people who are part of the fire services, part of disaster management. 
but maybe if you can spare a few minutes and listen to our side of the story which is really how do we engage with citizens too so coming in late uh, what it does is it doesn't allow you to one minute, i'm just trying to flip yeah uh, so I, i'm going to run through these statistics because everybody has quoted it coming in late uh, you have the advantage of not wasting time on some of the numbers but uh, something that i came across was you know heat related accidents which include fire heat and hot substances like oils cause about 9 million injuries and more than 120000 death 1 lakh 20000 deaths across the world and guess what india ranks number 1 in heat related deaths too and this was something that i came across which i thought may be worthwhile looking at uh the india view which is really ncrb data which i think all of us have spoken about so far we heard all the experts so far talk about it we lose about 30 indians every day in a fire as per the latest statistics 51% of the fire deaths come from just five states madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha chatisgarh and my own state of karnataka we lost about 2000 odd people in cooking gas and cooking gas bus and about 1990 due to electrical short circuit so cooking back gas burst as per the 2019 ncrb seems to be a big issue that we need to be focusing on so what is our view what what is ailing us as a country as a society when it comes to fire safety my view is that there are lots of reasons and lots of reasons that have been touched upon so far but some which maybe i can elaborate on we we heard other speakers today talking about rapid urbanization and poor safety planning the question that keeps bothering me very often is we have new cities we have growth of cities we make sure that we have water and electricity when a new layout comes up but we never plan for a fire station to come in the vicinity so i've been working in with the karnataka government trying to tell them when you set up a new area new layout please make sure that safety standards are met i don't know if the smart city projects take take care of some of these but traditionally we have never looked at fire safety as an as a must have utility that needs to be provided to citizens we heard from various fire chiefs earlier today about challenges that fire departments face both in terms of infrastructure be it in terms of equipment be it in terms of manpower be it in terms of training and we work very closely beyond carlton works very closely closely with the fire services of karnataka so i do have insights about some of their challenges the other bit from a citizens perspective that we have observed and being involved with fire safety is there's extremely poor coordination between civic bodies between municipalities in some cities and some parts of the country the fire departments come under municipalities in karnataka it comes under the home department but even then the municipality is the one that goes out and gives a final sanction for a building to be occupied and doesn't work in very closely with the fire departments in many cities and states electricity and entities like those who provide distribution of power very often don't work very closely and with the fire services and therefore they again there is a challenges with short circuits that we spoke about there is poor coordination unless we notice the fire chief is also from the fire services i mean sorry from the police forces very poor coordination with the police department i'll give you an example 10 years ago when the carlton towers fire happened in bangalore uh it took fire engines to reach the building over 1 hour because the traffic was blocked and there was no coordination between the fire department and the local traffic police there is always good that happens out of bad now the fire department and the traffic police works in great conjunction together so the moment they actually have fire personnel sitting in the police controlled rooms in case of an emergency so chances are many states who are on this call are already following that but that's a lesson we learned from carlton coming to the last bit and that's where we indians don't believe we'll ever die in a fire that's very very obviously first of all don't believe you'll die in an accident 
So why do you see a person wearing a motorcycle on a motorcycle, not wearing his helmet, but having the helmet on his shoulder? It's because there's sheer apathy and that goes even into fire safety. COVID, for example, is a classic example of how we don't take our own lives seriously. Actually, you will find people and the government up to a point can help us as citizens, but beyond a point, I think it's the duty of all of us to take care of our, to take care of our own selves and our families. I, in fact, have just in the last couple of months written an article with a professor at IIM Bangalore around this whole bit about why we Indians behave the way we do when it comes to our own safety. So if any of you would like to take a look at that article, I'd be more than willing to share it with you. But there is a behavioral issue among citizens around safety and our own safety. So that brings, it leads you on to low awareness because you believe you'll never be in a fire. I don't want to listen to anything about what to do in case of a fire accident of if I'm caught in a fire. We beyond Carlton run as Anup uh, Karanth had just mentioned earlier, a very focused awareness campaign on social media. And we, I'm glad to share with you that we now have a lot of interaction both across the country and from participants across the world. So that has been a great learning for us about citizen engagement that we talked about. What is our view having spent time in fire safety and you know, around uh, with, from a citizen's perspective? We believe there's a need for a comprehensive review and forward planning by cities for fire safety preparedness. And that's where we made a few steps in Karnataka with the local fire, safe, fire and emergency services. I will give you a quick peek into what we created. It's a first of its kind in India, a five-year fire safety blueprint that Beyond Carlton created in partnership with the Karnataka Fire and Emergency Services. So we didn't do it sitting alone. It took us a year to prepare this along with the fire services of Karnataka. Just a quick peek, we, the fire department shared with us some data which talked about for a five-year period between 2011 and 2016, we had in Bangalore 29 deaths, we had 251 injured and a property loss of about 269 crores. That was data that they provided us. And then we said, okay, let's start setting up some goals. And we said, let us look at various areas. And we said, the approach should be how can we introduce or look at compliance? One is to ensure compliance laws exist, but compliance, as all of us will agree, is a huge challenge. Some of the laws are very dated. I'll give you one more example from Carlton. Uh, you know, when the Carlton Towers incident happened, the local fire and emergency services in Karnataka didn't have authority prior to Carlton Towers to go into a high rise building and check for fire safety violations. And that shocked me as a parent who had lost a son as to why didn't you prevent a fire? And that's really when we filed a PIL in the high court and changed the state laws. And now the fire department is empowered. I'm just hoping all states and all fire departments have that power because unless the fire departments have the power, a, a municipal corporation can't go and certify for fire safeties, uh, you know, safety regulations. Obviously, we have to look at emergency fire and emergency capabilities. There are huge issues around that. And we took a third thing about in our approach about engaging with all stakeholders. I talked a little about it. Currently, all stakeholders tend to work in isolation. And lastly, how do we enhance awareness and participation? Our goal over a five-year term is ambitious, but we said we should have an ambitious target. And we said we should look at a zero fire death in Bengaluru and look at 50% at least reduction in injuries and property loss. So very quickly, just to share with you our approach, we said these are all the stakeholders. There is the local authorities, which is the Bangalore Development Authority and the Municipal Corporation, there's NDRF, the private enterprises, the builders, uh, medical aid becomes a critical element during accidents. Of course, the fire services, and the electricity department, which is best form in Bangalore. And last but not least, the public at large. 
the way we went about it is we set some guidelines. We said it should be a forward looking document. It should be consultative, meaning we should be able to talk to all these people. We should be in a space where we can collaborate. We should look at solutions and all, all, all solutions should be practical in nature. And you can see we, these were some of the guidelines we set for ourselves. This is a brief overview. You can download this from our website. It's available to everybody. So we set out some goals. We looked at capacity building. We looked at regulation and compliance. We looked at awareness creation. And last but not least at the bottom is really key milestones we wanted to achieve year by year. And we've set the, well, I mean, we, we are in progress and we're in motion right now in each of these areas. We do monthly meetings with the fire department to review where we are. Uh, yes, some spaces we have not been able to achieve large traction, but we are hoping that slowly we will be able to make a change. So I have an offer to make as Beyond Carlton. We'd, at, we'd love to create similar blueprints across the country. If any of you are interested, we can work in with you, help guide you, advise you from our learnings from Bangalore, and help you create five-year blueprints for your cities. So I wouldn't waste much time. I think we are already late for lunch. And I once again want to thank each of you for having given me an opportunity as a citizen to share a different perspective and a different view. So I hope I've stayed within your 15-minute uh, Timeline, Mr. Santosh Kumar, but thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Great to uh, listen to you. Thank you very much, first of all, about this certain tragedy. Uh, yeah. uh, now it's uh, leading to a kind of a, a saving lives uh, kind of a mission of yours. Yeah. So I must compliment you the way you have taken initi initiative in Bangalore and you are offering your services to uh, the other fire services. Uh, uh, this department of the state okay. uh, very nicely elaborated that how pragmatic the other views could be and uh, you I, I could take out the five major points uh, uh, one is this compliance then the cooperation then the capacity and then we are saying about in terms of coherence and uh, taking people at the making people responsible citizens mm -hmm. responsibility for uh, reducing their own risk, and these are the uh, kind of a, a kind of a basics for the framework which were designed for risk reduction for the fire. And it's a brilliant point which you have brought in. Uh, I I don't know time has already up, but I am really thankful to you that you are bringing these kind of uh, information. Uh, let me uh, see this if I have any burning question uh, so that uh, we can have last reaction from each of the panelists in the question if participants have. Raise any participants would like to uh, uh, have any question. Uh, so far, I don't see any question uh, in the whole uh, this scenario, probably. Uh, but anyway, uh, but I would suggest in this way that how we can go from here. And uh, uh, I would like to take uh, this. All have listened to every presentation. So Uday Vijan, I would just start from yours only that your final point other than what you have said and you have listened to all the presentations so i would have a last final point uh, before i request for the closing remarks from each of the panelists that uh, after listening to you what are the your key final take points uh, for this from here to where mr vijay yeah. yeah thank you uh, for having me uh, answer this but uh, uh, at the cost of repetition i would just say that i think it's extremely important for fire services to engage with citizens, but more importantly, get them to collaborate with you. Uh, try and get all stakeholders on the same table, which is challenging. Most often they're not. And uh, uh, some of you may not call it a blueprint. You may have other plans, but it's important to have a vision uh, for each fire services, and which is where I offered saying that if you would like us to support you in any way, we'd be more than glad to help partner with any any fire department across this country. Uh, so that's really what I would say. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Vijayan. Can I hear from Maharashtra? Anything which you would like to mention, uh, Mr. Prabhat? 
Are you there, Mr. Prabhat? I just uh, the I I would like to make a video, a short video, and send it on a pen drive or something to the uh, NID system, pressure ventilators that we work with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dastu. Seti, Mr. Seti from Urissa Fire Service, would you like to say any punchline, last point from your side? No point. Mr. Anu? Uh, yes, uh, Professor uh, Santosh Kumar, just one point here. I think, you know, we are fairly well advanced in terms of, you know, understanding of the SAM. I think we have done phenomenal work around it. We do have institutions and we do have, you know, a large number of establishments, you know, who are very well versed with, you know, what needs to be done on the course, etc. I think what is missing and I think what I echo what Uday said, you know, we need to bring community to the focus. And my, my only suggestion is that all the SDMAs and the fire and emergency services should come in together to you know, start a massive program around, you know, involving community in fire safety. That's all from my side. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anup Karant from the World Bank. And now, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mohanty, would you like to uh, give a final point from your side as an underlying point? Yeah, I, by and large, agree. <laughs> Whatever has been told by all the panelists, community engagement, how to mitigate uh, the risk, uh, inter-agency coordination by Mr. Bijan. To some extent, it is there, uh, part of the statute in Odisha, but there is gap also. But my, uh, you know, again, I'll repeat the same, uh, uh, what I suggested a while ago. Um, we need to encourage consultancy groups. They can, they can, you know, this consultancy, they cannot give free also. They can charge some fees, etc., nominal fees, but they should be, they should, that should comprise um, you know, ex fire service officers, those who have worked in the field, and they can give the consultancy to the occupiers, owners who are, in fact, at dark at this moment. Many of them do not know, unless, of course, somebody goes and asks that it is, you know, fire risk building and you have violated something, and then he comes to me. So, so there is a need in the entire country, probably to institutionalize the consultants. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Satyajit Mohanty. Uh, now, uh, we'll come back to Mr. Jena. Uh, you had uh, given your in keynote address that prevention is better than uh, cure, and uh, risk management should be brought into the main fire management instead of just focusing on response. What you have to say at this moment, Mr. Jena, as a remark uh, when you are concluding this so let me let me uh, say that uh, this this particular session has been personal to me has been so enriching uh, there is a need to modernize fire services but at the same time uh, fire services need to work with community and what um, Jan said uh, it, it is so important that, that we look to uh, work with communities, understand communities and take their views and then only things will improve. And that is why, though Odisha is one of the lead states in developing village disaster management plans and city disaster management plans, in our scheme of things, fire has never been permanently addressed. Now it gives me an opportunity to really relook at the entire approach. And certainly, I would like to disturb Mr. Vijay shortly and maybe a little frequently take his help, take his guidance. And uh, I know because I have worked with Dr. Satyajit Mohanty, anyway, he's uh, my senior, just like my brother. And together, we want to really do something very sincerely to improve the fire safety situation in the state. So, I would like to take help of all the panelists and take the guidance of Mr. Vijay to, to improve the situation in the state and not only that, to one in urban area, even in rural setting also there is a need because a lot of new houses are coming up. So unless we work with the communities and uh, 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 make them aware, 
and make them partners in the entire system. Possibly, these new houses that we build will also be prone to fire hazards. So, how do we prevent fire hazards in new constructions? That is also another area we would like to work. And I, I, I sincerely thank all of them. It's a great learning to OSDMA for OSDMA. And we in OSDMA will certainly take all these good ideas and prepare our plan of action for next for next three years. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jena. It's a very, very uh, kind of enriching uh, uh, for us as well to take this, that any output or uh, suggestions which have come up today, uh, the government is uh, willing to take forward as a kind of a... I would request uh, now Major General uh, Manoj Kumar Bindal uh, to say a few words at this uh, uh, closing point, uh, uh, listening to all this. Uh, may I request now General Bindal to kindly address, please, at this moment? So thank you very much. Uh, I would just uh, give this an, an insight that what we have gathered quickly and then request uh, Mr. Uh, 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 this uh, Mishra to give the vote of thanks. Uh, in an entire course of discussion and uh, learning from all the distinguished panelists, what we have got that one is this exposure of risk is 24 into 7 in the fire. And we, for addressing these issues, that uh, prevention is much uh, more needed and uh, we need to prepare differently than what we have been doing it before. And here that we got this as a population density is much more needed to be looked into just uh, rather than just focusing on a kind of a very conventional measurement and uh, new urbanization process is to be brought into this whether the smart cities and other are following it up. Fourth is this, uh, that how fire preparedness and population, uh, 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 this uh, density gaps, uh, which have been highlighted that everywhere, 94%, uh, 97%, 96% gap, how these gaps can be actually be filled in, whether the human resource or the technology in the different stages of time, but we need to plan for that. So emphasis is on the planning, and the capacity building process. So this particular framework, when we are talking about risk management, uh, this uh, capacity building framework has to be addressed on the community and also the fire governance itself, whether different kind of a players are operating, whether uh, we talk about this uh, uh, local self government and to the fire department or uh, civil defense and other uh, departments. And uh, we see this experiences from uh, five E's practices of the community engagement. And uh, all the fire responders now, uh, time has come that they are getting engaged into different kind of uh, uh, disaster responses uh, at the time of COVID and also uh, that they have to address the other disaster, including the fire. So it's just not the fire for them. So now the new challenges. So we need to revisit the entire framework of the and the regulations to be looked into, like the everyone highlighted about the building bylaws that urban uh, enforcement of bylaws. So how we are going to go and uh, the uh, the third party audit and the pro escalating or maybe the encouraging the consultancy group to professionally to the government and how that can be brought into. And another thing which was been brought into the electrical gadgets and other thing, the smaller uh, minuscule uh, work, which they have uh, uh, the mechanics, which they do and they ignore the safety measures have to be brought in. And what the Carlton also mentioned about the beyond Carlton is Mr. Vijayan that said that uh, that was very shocking in the kind of uh, that uh, fire department is not empowered to go and inspect the building. And uh, in many of the occasions also it has been identified that uh, whether we are uh, more power to the fire department will lead to a more kind of a bureaucracy that also has to be uh, uh, looked into uh, that how uh, the, with the community engagement that can be brought in as a possible kind of a transparent manner of community, uh, which we say that five C's, this, uh, uh, which we say in terms of compliance, capacity, collaboration, uh, capacity building and awareness to action. Many people might be aware, but not be taking action. So we need to revisit, review our plan and also go with the kind of a, in the new system and new challenges, which have been highlighted by all the different states. With the, in, uh, with the insurgence of technology, how those technology can also be brought in, in saving the fire responders and also the citizens. So these were the larger kind of uh, 
my deliberations happened and uh, uh, brought in in terms of many points uh, we will cap we have captured but just few points i thought i must bring as a kind of a summary of the day and now i thank uh, and extend my heartfelt thanks to all the distinguished panelists mr jena general bindal dr mohanty mr vijayan uh, mr dastur mr prabhat uh, uh, to all of you that you have been and all the distinguished delegates who have joined and listened to the present uh, presentation and anup my special thank to you that you have been bringing all this uh, smaller smaller issues uh, as a very very important issues in terms of addressing this fire system i my thanks to mr lochan also mr general bindal who is not here but on his heartfelt thanks and my team dr anuradha morya and entire it team who is been helping uh, my special thank to you dr anuradha for uh, making it happen and uh, uh as a very successful program and now i request uh, mr uh, lochan to uh, uh kindly give the formal vote of thanks if at all needed i think thank you very much from an idm good afternoon uh, on behalf of odisha state disaster management authority the entire disaster management community in odisha and across the country and all other think tanks available who actually extend their support to disaster management I extend a warm vote of thanks to all the participants, panelists, as well as to hold this very valuable meeting. My special thanks to Professor Santosh Kumar for in going ahead with the organizing this program, extending the full cooperation on behalf of National Institute of Disaster Management. So my profound thanks to Professor Santosh Kumar ji. My thanks to Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, being the head of an IDM, to be. actually a national institute to extend their support to a state organization like osdma my profound thanks to major general uh, manoj pinda i extend my thanks to my boss my mentor and the disaster management uh, mentor to say sri pradeep kumar jena who is now the additional chief secretary and also the managing director of osdma i prefer to call him the md osdma because that makes the disaster preparedness so he's a mr lochan my special thanks to him also from our side to so mr jena a very very energetic officer i have found taking the proactive engagement thank you mr jena thank you thank you thank you and when it was his vision kamal go ahead with uh, organizing this with an idea be in the mainstream of nas be in the national mainstream be a part of an idm process of educating the country so that was his idea his next idea was listen to the others there are experts available like mr vijay and mr dastur mr randal so why don't you listen to them it, so it was his vision his advice his scope and despite his personal tragedy let me take the opportunity and his permission to intimate the community that sri pradesh jena lost his father 3 days before Oh. So he at the age of eighty-three, and despite his greatest loss, he is still with us, giving time, advice, guidance. And I feel sorry sometimes when I see him because he takes at least one meal a day as per the rituals, and still he is there to help us. My, my deep condolences uh, to Dr. Jena for to your family. Our condolences. Thank, to you. thank, thank, thank. We are very sorry to hear. My profoundest thanks to Sri Pradeep Jena, not because he is the additional chief secretary and managing director, but being a very good man and very good disaster manager. I extend my profound thanks to Sri Sathya Mohanty, who has been a friend, philosopher, guide to all of us. He is being the director general of police, fire service, and secretary so general of fire service, home guards, and civil defence. He has been a mentor. So thank you, sir, for giving your time. my my profound thanks to all the panelists sri anup karan who is a good old friend of mine who has actually advised and given me assistance uh, to invite the resource persons to identify them and to in, to be in touch with them so thanks to you anup for my side my thanks to thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you anup ji prabhat rangdale he has been cooperating with us like anything Mr. Dastur, my profound thanks to you. Who you will 
we be preferring to learn from you more and give possible with the permission of uh, MDOSGMA. We will be visiting your state to look at the things you have done. With Maharashtra and, with Maharashtra and Karnataka. Uh, Karnataka. Yes. My best and most profound thanks to Mr. Vijay. He has been, he has converted a personal tragedy in the life-saving mission of life. We are proud of you, Mr. Vijay. We are proud of your effort and we are proud of your commitment to save lives. We will be learning from you. And I just, uh, managing that OSGM was telling me, so Kamal, why don't you invite Mr. Bejan for a knowledge how lecture series? We are thinking towards that and we'll seek your time and cooperation to provide your knowledge more to us so that we can have a better disaster management and fire safety system. So, on behalf of uh, this, uh, sorry, I also extend my thanks to Mr. Sethi. He is a good old friend of mine. We have been working since long. So my profound thanks to you for being a part of this. I extend my profound thanks to my colleagues in OSDMA, our technical experts, Mr. Magnod, who has been uh, trying a lot to organize this program, the state project officers, uh, Dr. Anuradha from NIDM, who has been helping us in technical aspects of the webinar. So on, pro on behalf of OSDM, I extend a full thanks to all of these personnel who have been okay. very helpful. Okay. Eh? Okay. Of NIDM also, NIDM, OSDMA, my profound thanks to you. Thank you very much.